So uh, what we're going to be doing today, just so that you understand a little bit about the format, is uh, we have a wonderful panel up here, and everybody's going to introduce themselves in just a moment. Uh, we're going to have you guys introduce yourselves, uh, do a little icebreaker, and then we're going to talk a little bit that old-fashioned, boring way of what I call mug and jug, some information to pour out there to you. And then we're basically going to do a flipped classroom. So what we're going to do is have you participate in uh, building a business model canvas for veteran opportunities um, for education and community engagement within your own institutions or within your own community. So we're gonna really flip things around on you and make you be active learners and we are going to come out and help facilitate that. So it should be a, a lot of fun and not falling asleep over the next three hours. So I think the first thing that I'm gonna do is have everyone introduce themselves. I, I guess I'll go first and then I'm gonna send it over to the panel and then we wanna know about you too. The more we know about you, the more engaging I think we can be, um, where you are and what you do and why you're here, that type of thing. So my name is Beth Curley, and that's K-E-R-L-Y. We say that it sounds like the stooge, but it's spelled differently. So Beth Curley. Um, if you ever email with me, it comes up as Mary Beth, and if you ever call me Mary Beth, I'll say that you're my grandmother. That's the only person that ever called me Mary Beth. Uh, so my email doesn't match me. Um, I'm with Hillsborough Community College in Tampa, Florida. And um, I have been a full-time faculty there for now about six years, I do believe. I've lost count. I hesitate on that because I was an adjunct instructor there since uh, 1999 and then came on uh, full-time with them uh, six years ago. And I teach uh, all things business, that's probably the easiest way to say it, management, marketing, general business, personal finance, oh my goodness, and then our baby, the one that we really love, and that's entrepreneurship and innovation. And so that's a little bit about me, nice, quick, and dirty there about uh, Beth Curley, not Mary Beth Curley. So I'm going to um, throw it over to my panel and let them introduce themselves, their selves right now. Here you go. Hi, everybody. I'm Greta. I'm Greta Kishbaugh, and I am with St. Petersburg College. I'm across the bay, uh, closer to the Gulf of Mexico from these guys. Uh, I also do part-time adjunct at Hillsborough Community College. Uh, these guys have become my really good friends over the years. I teach business, entrepreneurship, management is probably my specialty, um, but one of the things closest to my heart over the last three or four years has been veteran education, providing veteran groups um, free. Uh, I, um, free, we're going to do some maybe some online stuff coming up here, which I'm hoping you guys can give us some great ideas and uh, something true to my heart as I work with these um, folks. Um, I'm also working with people that are just genuinely unemployed right now, looking for business work uh, through something called Startup Quest, through our unemployment <coughs> group um, in Pinellas County. Um, they do it in Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Gold's involved in that. He's one of our judges and mentors also. So the whole mentor model, the whole idea of getting folks interested and in, in back, back into uh, maybe starting their own business. Uh, that's what I do. So, mm -hmm. Janice? Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Arizona. Um, I am not with Hillsboro Community College, <laughs> and I'm not from Florida, but we do have water here. It's called Tempe Town Lake. That's the <laughs> ocean. I am the state director of the Arizona Small Business Development Center Network. We are part of the nationwide network, and how many of you are familiar with SBDC? Hey, love it, love it, love it. Good, very good. Um, so we, we handle this for Arizona, and we're also the host for the statewide Procurement Technical Assistance Center, the PTAC. So you'll hear SBDC and PTAC, and when you hear those things, what that means is we're working with businesses from a number of different perspectives. In the SBDC, we do the one-on-one -on -one counseling and training, help them from a financial standpoint. In the PTAC, we help them successfully obtain and uh, execute on government contracts at, at all levels. We actually uh, provide services to everybody, obviously, but in 2010, I would say, we started to do some, something specially for, for veterans. Um, we were part of a veterans subgrant with Colorado and Montana and, and Kansas. And we have special initiatives which drive what we do, but some things fall in the category of it's just the right thing to do. And I think working with veterans uh, is that. They are very suited to um, uh, entrepreneurship, and you'll hear more about that later. Thank you. I have this one, so I can use this one. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, hi, I'm Andy Gold. I'm also from Hillsborough Community College. I work very closely with both um, Beth and Greta. 
and I'm really excited to be here for a lot of different reasons. Um, I'm from New York. I moved down to Tampa about two years ago, uh, really with the sole purpose and reason uh, to build an entrepreneurship program at that institution and to really uh, try to make a difference locally initially with the students that we interact with, but more importantly in our community at large. Um, I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. I still have my company in New York. I founded, uh, the last one I founded was in 1994, uh, still running it and operating it there. So I kind of have one foot in the private sector and one foot in the public sector. Uh, and uh, to be honest with you, it's been very challenging for me on a professional level to deal with a lot of the internal workings of a bureaucracy and all of that stuff. So I like to I like to sort of uh, refer to myself as an institutional rebel rouser. Uh, and that's kind of what I really try to do at my college, HCC. Um, I try to ruffle feathers. I you know, try to uh, challenge things that have just always been done a certain way. And I'm really excited to share a lot of what we've accomplished um, in a very short period of time and learn, most importantly, about the things you're doing and what you're interested in doing in your local communities. You guys tell us a little bit about yourselves. Hi, uh, good morning. I'm Nancy Sanders, and I'm the Maricopa Center Director for the Small Business Development Center. So work with Janice and her team. And um, I'm new to my role, so I'm definitely here to learn. And we certainly have had some successes, as Janice talked about, and just looking to build upon those successes. Awesome. Hi, I'm Katie Bodie. I work with the Maricopa Small Business Development Center as well with Nancy. Um, I'm new also. I've been there just about a month. So I am here to learn all about um, what we can do uh, working with veterans. Aloha. I'm from HCC, but not Hillsborough Community <laughs> College. I'm from Hawaii Community College nice. on the island of Hawaii. And I'm the interim director for the um, Office of Continuing Education and Training. So in continuing education and training, we're looking at doing some different um, entrepreneurial activities for our vet community. Nice. Sorry, what was your name? Debbie, Debbie. Shigehara, yeah. Good morning. In Hawaiian, it's uh, aloha kakahiaka. It's glad to be here. I'm from Hawaii Community College. And recently, we obtained a $10 million grant from the Department of Labor, which was divided with Kauai, M Maui, and our island. And for our community college, uh, with the Department of Labor, we've developed five innovative business courses, two sustainable programs, and a geographical information system that vets could take. But what is excited about this is that we just began dialogue with the Department of Defense. We met with the major of the Keokaha Military Reservation to develop on-campus courses. And this would just be a component. What we learn here, we can take back to the uh, military and tell them about this program that is, that is developed uh, from this uh, conference. So nice. I'm really excited to learn. What's your, what's your name? Will, Will, Will Tihiro. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Waverly Coleman. Uh, I am the Assistant Dean of the Division of Business and Technology and the Executive Director of Corporate Solutions at Community College of Philadelphia. It's a long title. Uh, basically, it's a dual title uh, because I, I, my unit is responsible for both credit and non-credit. Um, the main things that we do is work with business organizations to uh, provide education and training to incumbent workers. We also work with the workforce development system in the city of Philadelphia to help dislocated and unemployed workers uh, gain job skills to get back into the workforce. And then uh, throughout the college, what we do is we try to uh, make connections with business and industries to different um, technical programs so that they can hire, we can be a pipeline to those companies to hire our graduates and also so that uh, representatives from those companies can sit on our program advisory uh, committees and so the college can also have a relationship with those companies for um, institutional advancement or giving. 
Um, I'm here today because um, we have a, under my unit, a uh, center for uh, Center for Small Business Education, Growth, and Training, um, which is an entrepreneurial center designed to help uh, individuals who are looking to start a business start a business. Uh, and we also were um, a part of the committee, the grant committee that successfully uh, received the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business um, Grant. We're one of, I think, 10 around the country and I guess really the, re the reason I'm here is because, um, I just lost his name, the gentleman from Babson College told me, Richard, uh, yes. Richard Bliss said, this is the conference you have to go to, uh, <laughs> to grow your entrepreneurial program. And so one of the things I want to get out of this conference is if there's other uh, Goldman Sachs uh, uh, units represented, I'd like to meet some of them to see how to leverage that program to grow uh, entrepreneurship. This is your this is your first NACI. This is my conference? first NACI. Conference. Well, you you made a great pick. It was a great selection and great advice that that guy gave you. Yes. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jason Campbell. I do operations management for the Entrepreneurial Learning Initiative, and we do entrepreneurial mindset education programs, most notably the Ice House Entrepreneurship Program. And uh, I'm here today because, uh, as a recent student veteran myself, who's dabbled a bit in entrepreneurship, I thought I could learn quite a bit. And uh, one more uh, along, or a note along those lines, we did a big project with the California SBDC system, and we used Ice House and Small, like uh, compressed workshops across 13 sites in the state of California. So I thought I could exchange some best practices and maybe learn from you all. And in full disclosure, you and I and Beth have talks, <laughs> and we're collaborating and working on a whole project we'll talk about later. So I'm really excited. I'm so excited that you're here. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks for putting this on. This is great. Hey, welcome. Good, good morning. Yeah. Come on down. Ready to go. You missed all the good stuff. Yeah. It's it, yeah. Huh. Actually, our participants are better than us. I, they are. <laughs> good morning, everyone. This is Jenny Hershaft, and I'm actually with the Maricopa. Yes. Yeah. We're with the Thank you. Oh, shh. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no mic inside. It's hard to <laughs> Jenny? Uh, yes, good morning everyone. I am Jenny Hersheft with the Maricopa SBDC and we're located out of the Gateway Community College and we often talk about our veteran programs um, to our clients and that is whether it's new clients, startups or existing clients because we constantly receive calls and meet with clients to talk about the veteran program. So I'm very excited to be here. This is my first conference and what a great one to kick it off with. Yes. So thank you for having us. Hi, um, I'm Rebecca Evans. I am with Blue Ridge Community College. I'm in Weirs Cave, Virginia. Um, I teach accounting. I'm a professor of accounting, and I also oversee um, a student organization that does economic development, um, both in, within the United States in about seven different countries. Uh, we have a veterans uh, department for veterans on our campus, but it's very limited. So I was very curious about how um, maybe this session could um, give me some ideas to bring back and funnel into that area and sort of light a little fire because I mm -hmm. think there's just so much more opportunity for us as a college and for our students. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm also a first time NACI um, attendee. Nice. Um, I uh, run a small business incubator at Burlington County College in Southern New Jersey. And I also write grants for the college. Um, I'm interested in developing some small business courses and um, opportunities specifically for better. So I'm thrilled to be here. What was your name? Barbara Witkowski. Barbara. Nice to have you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Charles Griffin. I'm the department chair of entrepreneurship, marketing, and economics at Pitt Community College, which is in eastern North Carolina. We started our associate's degree program in fall of 2013 so you know we're really just getting into it now uh, we currently have about 61 students enrolled in that associate's degree program and they'll get a two-year degree in entrepreneurship uh, we have a large contingency of veterans in eastern north carolina with fort bragg you know pope air force base and a lot of them so we wanted to attend this to find out how we can better reach out and serve them uh, 
our bragging point, if you will, we recently got a, a Golden Leaf grant in conjunction with the local university, which is East Carolina University, who won yesterday, by the way. We're number 18 now in the AP poll. Uh, to actually go in, and we're going to train all the, actually, it's going to be, I think it's 20, 32 middle school teachers as NC Real facilitators, and then they're going to go back and train the middle school students in summer camps. They're going to actually teach them that NC Real program. So we're real proud of that, and hopefully that will spur some interest for some of them, which you know will eventually end up in our program. Uh, but we look forward to it. Um, good morning, everyone. I am Catherine Clyde. I am the um, fairly new dean of the business division at Pitt Community College. So I'm here with Chuck. Um, and I don't really have anything else to add to what he said. He pretty much covered it all. Um, but I just think, you know, being in Greenville, North Carolina, Eastern North Carolina, kind of centered in between all these military bases, we're really in a prime position to reach out and do more to help our veterans. So that's kind of why we're here this morning. Nice. Thank you for having us. First, first NACI conference oh, as well. Oh, awesome! Great. Yeah, we're getting all the first timers. What is it about us? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm Gail Swart. I'm from Norco College, and it's a part of Riverside Community College District. We are the newest community college in Southern California. We have about 10,000 students, and I don't know what the FTES any, is anymore. I'm a full-time faculty member in business and management and marketing. And I got a, a little tiny grant, about $3,000, from our what we call Deputy Sector Navigator. It's, it's our, we have deputy, deputy Sector Navigators throughout California that are in specific areas. We have one for manufacturing, one for entrepreneurship, and they're assigned by regions. We have, I want to say, 12 regions in California. I always forget. We're Region 9. That's all I know. Anyway, I got a little mini grant last year to um, develop entrepreneurship curriculum. Our first certificate, very small certificate, is going through the process right now. We hope to start it next fall. I also attended the on, I'm, I'm brand new to NACI, by the way, too. Um, and I, st I went to the NACI online entrepreneurship thing, training. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm not sure exactly. It was, it was an interesting that. thing. It was good. It was good. It was, yeah, it was interesting. And um, so I'm just uh, looking to kind of pick up things. I, I picked this conference because we have, we're situated in Southern California. We have a lot of veterans coming through. I have lots of veterans coming through our classroom. They're a challenging population sometimes, and they need a lot of direction. Uh, and we, um, we're really fortunate that we have a full-time office of veteran services that assists our, our veterans with any help they need. So if I have issues with veterans, I kind of walk them over there and hand them off, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And we also have, we're also fortunate to have a VA hospital not far from us. So we have um, a mobile counseling unit that comes in every other week from the VA and uh, provides counseling for our, uh, our um, VA, our veterans. So I'm just kind of interested because I think it's a population that we can kind of capitalize on in terms of entrepreneurship when we start up our certificates next fall. Thank you. Nice. Hi, I'm Sandra Louvier, and I'm from HCC, Houston Community College. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited to be here because uh, I like meeting some of the people I've been talking with on the phone. I'm a NACI ambassador, too, so I've been in touch with about 50 colleges throughout the year. And it's just been amazing to get to know what everyone's doing. And so I'm looking forward to meeting you face to face. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's see, Houston Community College started our Center for Entrepreneurship back in 2009, and I was the only one that came to the, the NACI conference then. And the next year, we brought one more, and the next year, we brought our, brought our president. Um, in 2011, we won the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Project, too. And uh, so we've had about 300 people graduate from that now. Last year, we won a Minority Business Development Agency grant from the Department of Commerce, and since then, we've uh, gotten $87 million in contracts for clients of our Minority Business Development Agency just in the first year. So we've now created an Office of Entrepreneurial Initiatives, and we have our chancellor here. Uh, HCC teaches about 75,000 students a semester, and our, our, our top guy is here today, uh, here at NACI presenting, so we're excited about that. Nice. And so is our chief entrepreneurial officer. We have 10 people here, and next year you're all coming to Houston, so we're excited about that too. Oh, nice. So I won a Coleman Grant, so I've been on the phone with, with the Coleman yep. Grant Colleges, and we did one of our events as a veteran event, and we have an alumni entrepreneur who's winning an award 
this conference, and she's a, a, a veteran and a, uh, an entrepreneur, and she has a, she, she's actually winning the award for her, the, the business that she started as a result of our business plan competition back in 2010. It's the Women Veterans Business Center, mm -hmm. and since then she's been recognized by the White House, and so, she, so we're proud that she's gonna be here to win the award too, so. Excellent. Okay, so we have one more in the back who oh, arrived. Right. Oh, in the back, it's, it's, uh, he doesn't get yeah. to escape. Oh, I'm oh, royalties. Okay, yeah. very good. Uh, congratulations to Houston. You guys do. Who's your big guy today that you're having? Your number one guy you were referring. Maldonado. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys do a great job. Thank you. The outstanding job. Uh, my name is O.J. Sidor. I'm with the College of Southern Nevada. Um, in Las Vegas. Um, this is my second conference here. Uh, I got so inspired last year, I wrote my first grant, never done that before. Never realized how many T's you have to cross and I's you have to do. Uh, but ended up getting a $75,000 grant for, uh, we're flipping a classroom and I'm tweaking it in other different ways. But the reason we're here today is to kind of take a look at phase two, phase three of that process and how we get veterans involved. I teach at uh, Nellis Air Force Base in leadership and management, some marketing for the most part, but uh, there's a real need for that, so I thought I'd come in and learn stuff. Thank you very much, glad to be here. All right, so being that we're gonna be using our, being that we're going to be using our minds a lot today, um, I think that we need to get them moving because again your coffee hasn't quite kicked in and sitting around a table at nine o'clock in the morning just is not a good thing so yes um, I can't call myself Professor Curley in here so Beth is a real nut job you're gonna find that out over the next two and a half hours um, that we're together and so what I'm gonna make you everyone do is we're gonna stand up and you're going to get a partner whom you do not know all right, so those of you that are in pairs that you know you came with your best friend and you don't want to leave them. Um, and I want you, Andy, will you demonstrate for me real sure. quick? Sure. Yeah, oh, wait a minute, no, I need somebody I don't know. Uh, oh well. This is a demonstration, but you're not allowed to have pick someone that you know. How about Janice? All right, so, or, I, yes. no, or, I, or I can Janice do it. Janice can okay. come over. Yeah, we, Janice. Janice yeah. and I don't know each other. As a matter of fact, Janice doesn't know what this icebreaker is, so this is gonna work out even <laughs> more beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to um, describe what you're going to do once you find your partner and then by the way we can use the whole room so don't be just right around here move to, so that you have space okay so Janice yes what we're going to do oh, so neither one of us is blinded there um, we're gonna stand right across from each other like this okay so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start counting and we're gonna count to three I'm gonna say one you're two I'm three then you must go back to one, and then I'm two, you're three. Are you following me? Yes. <laughs> I'm one, you're two, three, then one, two, three. We're only counting to three. Back and forth. Ready? Here we go. I need a Yeah, I know. <laughs> so crazy. Okay, so here we go. I know, she should, she should be all over this. I know. All right, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, one, three. One, two, three. One, two. Three. <laughs> oh, really? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. She is good. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, everybody, I want you to get up. I'm not going to show the next one yet. Um, so everybody, get up. Find yourself a pair, and you're going to count back and forth. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's a lot harder. <laughs> Well, yeah, there is. There is. I, I counted. Yeah. There's a step two, and they're going to be So you can start, and once you find a partner, it's one, two, three, and eight. 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 One, two, three, you got it? Okay. But wait, stay there. There's more to it than this that. Yes. No, just one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, go, go, let's see. Go ahead. Go. 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 
Good, you guys are good. Okay. I think they're good, Beth. They're good. Everybody's good, yes. All right. Level now. The guys, okay, good. Janice, come back. <laughs> All right, so now number one is a clap. All right, so instead of number one, it's a clap, just like it was. Instead of number two, it's a song. And then three. Okay? All right, they get the gist. All right, go. Now it's clap, stomp, and three. Clap, stomp, and three. are good. You guys are good. Okay. Good. Andy, go ahead. Nice to meet you. Yes. I think so, yes. All right, let's see you guys do it. Let's go, man. I know, it's so. Awesome. All right. <laughs> All right. As fun as that was, now we do have to do a little bit of uh, sharing of some information. Mm. So. I think what we want to talk about first, I'm going to turn this over to the panel, um, is to help put some perspective around 
uh, entrepreneurship with our vet veteran community. So basically, some um, very high level types of statistics with regards to our veteran communities and employment. Um, some of you might be more aware than others on these, um, these statistics. So I'm just gonna t throw it over to the panel. Some of them, you have um, presented here, and we might just touch on a couple of those. I know the um, SBDC may have some th things that they would like to include as well. Greta may have some. So um, is there anything that you guys would consider um, a really important statistic that we as community colleges and entrepreneurship and the resources around community college should know about? Anybody want to take it? I'll start. I can start. Um, the, the first one that's on the, the handout that you have, I think, is a really important one. Um, it says that veterans are at least 45% more likely than those with no active duty military experience to pursue self-employment. Um, I think that that speaks volumes um, about uh, what we're trying to accomplish here today, um, but more importantly about our veteran uh, population. Um, in my experience, what I discovered uh, years ago, and really what led to the initiation of an entrepreneurship program uh, focused toward veterans at Hillsborough Community College was an experience I had in New York. Uh, my wife, uh, Anne, and myself, my wife was working at the time at a, a co small private college in New York, um, uh, started up a program called My Soldier. Uh, it started uh, because a student of hers, Juan Salas, um, had had three tours in Iraq, um, was exiting the, the military, uh, and he started to share with uh, my wife and you know, different experiences that he had, uh, mostly about his longing for wanting to come back and you know, what his aspirations were when he finished college and so on and so forth. So uh, the My Soldier program started um, as a small uh, pen pal writing program uh, to deployed military servicemen and women in uh, initially Iraq and Afghanistan. And it ballooned uh, from 2004 uh, all the way through 2008 uh, to over 300,000 Americans in all 50 states writing to uh, military service men and women deployed all over the world. And uh, we did it, my family did it. Uh, we would send people who participated little wristbands. Uh, and when I would start to get correspondence back from the deployed service men and women, uh, you know, they would ask for certain things, you know, like chapstick and stuff that they uh, couldn't access uh, easily um, where they were. And, and you could send little care packages through the Army has a, a distribution system where they can get packages uh, overseas. Um, but then we would get these letters back and many of them uh, spoke about uh, what they would like to do upon returning to the United States. I think it made them feel more connected to uh, their, where they were from, uh, made them feel hopeful that they were coming back. And uh, you began to identify a commonality, which was uh, this desire to be self-employed. You know, when I get back, I, you know, I'd like to start up my own business. I've got some ideas for a company. I'd like to maybe open a franchise, whatever the case might be. Some were more grand, scalable concepts. Some were just sort of more mom and pop concepts. But I, I think because many military service men and women are sort of predisposed to have the attributes that most entrepreneurs must have, most notably you know, to be highly adaptable, um, to be able to manage risk, to work well in teams, you know, discipline, all of those things uh, translate really well into uh, entrepreneurship. So um, I always said to myself, if I had ever had the chance to uh, create a program uh, for veterans uh, related to entrepreneurship, I would do it. So when I came to HCC and partnered with Beth, uh, she and I are like the co-founders of this program. Uh, we really uh, you know, took the ball and ran with this and had what was an amazing uh, first event last October. There's a flyer on your table for our upcoming event in November. And the thing about this event that I think was most uh, powerful, and it's a one-day uh, symposium where veterans, active duty service members, and their spouses come onto our college campus, is that it's a very, very high impact event. Um, it's an event that is centered around uh, attendees breaking out into little workshop groups. Um, there's no um, sponsors there, so there's nobody there at a table sort of handing out uh, material, buy my thing, do this, do that. 
Uh, it's all very high volume, high impact uh, workshops. And it's, it's really, really great. And I, I want to get to that okay. when we get a little bit later into the conference, because I think that there's a lot of great information that they're going to want to hear about, about what we're doing specifically. Um, is there any other uh, date data that needs to be shared that you think are, <laughs> is important? Anybody? Uh, we, we have a couple of things. Um, so in addition to the data that you see here, you see the sheer volume of numbers is, is unbelievable. And what I, I said before, we really got involved in, in 2010. We saw some numbers for Arizona. And at that time, and, and I don't have these numbers with me, but this, this is what got our attention. There are something like 600,000 or so veterans in Arizona, which you know kind of blew my mind. And we, we were able to participate in the first that I'm aware of ever statewide veterans business conference. So uh, that was pretty exciting for us. Un unfortunately, the organization that brought us into that space um, was, wasn't funded. And, but that sparked an interest in us, so we were able to, to keep it going. What I do have for you, though, on the, there's a slide here with a lot of stars on it. On the back, I do have some data. I do have some data about the veterans that we work with. So on average, we have about 19, 20% of our clients who are, are veteran business owners. So um, we provide counseling and one-on-one, and one-on-one uh, one -on -one advising, training and workshops. When we partnered with uh, Colorado, uh, Montana, and Kansas, we were able to expand our efforts. And, and we were gonna go for a grant, but we decided not to because um, half of Arizona has veterans that want to be in business and the other half want to play golf. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and that's never going to change. That's what we learned. And so that's and something that you guys may keep in mind as you're developing programs. You know, your, your uh, veteran demand is going to probably vary right, from location to location. So this, these numbers represent probably about half the state in terms of um, uh, participation. Uh, and, and those Veterans then do go on to hire people. So you see the number of jobs that were created or retained, 51 businesses, 15 million in increased sales, which too, some of our successful award winners, some of our uh, very um, you know, best participants are veteran business owners. And so as Andy was saying, they take, it, they take to it naturally. They do a good job at it, and, and there's a way to work with them and engage them mm -hmm. so that it really produces economic impact results for the communities, the state, and the nation. Good. Do you have anything to add on that, Chris? Uh, yes, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about my educational program, but I, I did get a few stats from SCORE last night. That's who I partner with to do the education. And uh, when they're coming back, uh, we're finding that they are – Veterans, they are getting it more education. So those of you that are starting new courses, even if they've got, now I had a group, and I'll talk more about it later, a lot of them already had a degree, but they still now are entering our certificate program. So that's a great, we're seeing that. And I, I couldn't find a fact, I couldn't find a fact, but you know, 9% of, of the veterans that come back, in Florida we've got about 108,000 over the last five years, per year. So we're up to about, what, 400? 500,000, and that's just in Florida alone. South Florida is doing a lot of work with the veterans already with grants, so we're just getting into that. But in, in, the, in the middle of Florida, western Florida, where we're from, St. Petersburg, Tampa, uh, we're seeing a lot of veterans, and we have a beautiful place to golf, too. Uh, that's, so a lot of people are retiring and coming back. But they are, even if they've already gone on the GI Bill and finished their education, we're seeing the stats now that they're coming back to school. And then they're getting maybe a different type of degree. So maybe they they got a degree in something, uh, maybe uh, engineering or something. Mm -hmm. Now they're coming back and getting the entrepreneurship degree. And we'll talk more about that when, yeah. when we talk about the program. So I don't have stats to back that up, but we have real life stats yeah. to back it up that, that even though, you know, the, so they're getting funding or we're trying to help them get funding, so they do want to go back to school. And, and even if they have a degree, like I said, they're, they're still doing the continuing. So there you go. Andy, you and I were talking this morning mm -hmm. about um, the numbers of 
people that are veterans that are leaving the military over the next year. And the reason we wanted to bring this statistic up is because of the opportunity that this is going to be giving all of us. Um, again, we have SBDCs read, um, here today. We, we have um, college institutions. Do you want to touch on that a little bit about the, the how many people are going to be leaving over the next um, year? I mean, I think the estimates are all over the place, but um, suffice to say that hundreds of thousands of military service men and women will be exiting the military um, over the next several years. I mean, each year uh, there's uh, a naturally occurring um, exiting of military service men and women, but the size of the military will be, by all estimations, at the end of 2015, at the lowest uh, volume or lowest number level that it's been at post-World War II. Uh, so it's going to be a low point in terms of active duty uh, service men and women, uh, which means that all of the folks exiting will be looking for all of these educational opportunities, employment opportunities, and so forth. And, and we believe that community colleges provide a tremendous uh, gateway for uh, those veterans to you know, pursue their dreams and continue their education. Yes. Oh, please. For the SBDC. So to fund these enterprises, do you have to go to SBA, or do they seek a venture capitalist, or? Uh, it's across the board. Um, banks, uh, and of course the last couple of years it's been kind of uh, you know, really unusually tight. But they, uh, they could go to private banks, uh, where, where it's lending, really, until. Like I was saying. <laughs> yeah, they would go to banks, um, uh, large banks, community banks. Uh, a few with credit union, wherever there was money available. And uh, over the last several years when the economy was so difficult, we had to get even more creative. Um, uh, sometimes some very expensive money, um, you know, uh, asset-based lending and things like that, they had to go to whatever they needed to do to, to uh, um, pursue their plans. A few probably wanted to pursue crowdfunding I would say that's not the majority, but people started to think outside of the box because you get to a certain point and you need that capital. When capital is tight and banks, which have money, are not lending money, then what are you going, what are you going to, to do? Uh, we've, we've seen that improve now, but the bottom line is businesses need access to capital. And so as you develop your programs, you want to look at where that capital is and when market conditions uh, mean one is tighter than others, then you just get more creative and you dig a little bit deeper to see what's out there. And I just want to add to that and just say that it really depends on at what stage the veteran or any business enterprise is at. Um, you know, funding for the most part for very early stage ventures is, uh, is non-existent, you know, other than, you know, friends, family, fools, credit cards, you know, whatever the case might be. There's some, there, there's some. Do you remember those eyes being dotted? We're gonna show you the bad ones. Um, We're gonna show you the bad ones. But the reason I'm mentioning that is um, there are great resources like SBDCs that can, um, you can sort of pass on an entrepreneurship student to that has a more defined and refined business uh, model that then makes it, I think, easier for the SBDCs to further nurture that idea forward and also to connect them with the appropriate uh, lending and financing sources that are available. There's also specifically for veterans considering franchising as a business venture. We just read about recently um, a federal uh, piece of legislation uh, that hasn't been approved yet that would provide for 25% a uh, subsidy for veterans to pay for a franchise fee um, to offset that cost. So there are, there are many, as, as Janice said, there's like lots of different um, branches of funding that you can tap into, uh, but I think it's most important, you know, depending upon, to, to, to know where you are within that ecosystem. Like for Beth and I, we're working with just early stage folks who come in with an idea, uh, and our job is to get them to either realize the idea is valid or not, it's as simple as that. You're either going to launch your company in 15 weeks or you're going to realize your idea has no validity. But for those that are valid, we can f pass them along to folks like Janice 
and um, and and that's where your we'll, which we'll talk about where your community partnerships will really come into play. Yeah, we'll talk about that too when I go over little grant stuff. I, I worked with a veteran all summer looking up grants, and we're, our best bet is going to be actually going to a private person that he knows and asking for some upfront capital. So it's, it's kind of come down to that, but there's a big boots to business groups. They're all going to mm -hmm. funnel through your programs. So you guys are already getting the grants. All right. I'm yeah. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, brother, we're not married to this agenda. So it's yeah. more on the topic of funding funding you, you want me? Let me show yeah, you. Just um, I, I mean, you know, you, I, I think I think you just I think you know already. But let me show you. Just well, if, if just escape. Yes. I, I think Greta. You, I just want to mention that if anybody needs to use the bathroom, because I had trouble finding it, it's out the door to the left. If anyone does need to use it. Where's what are you Safari? Oh no no no! It's already. Oh, open. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. She's not used to a Mac. I'm not a Mac person. Shame on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she but basically this summer, just very briefly. Here you um, go. I worked with a young. Yeah, this is a bad one. You can keep it up. That's fine. I worked with a, a, a veteran, a Vietnam veteran, and he has a really great business idea. He came to me two years ago, and he had no idea. He can't even type in the computer. No education. Um, and the last two years, we put together a pretty solid business plan. So we went out to this to find some grants, and this is where someone. This is where the SBA takes you. I'm not making fun of the SBA, I'm sorry. But this is one of them that they tell you is okay. When you get started, and I'm gonna click the get started uh, button, it looks real. It looks pretty real. Um, what are your current financing need? And then when you go through all the questions, at the very end it says, we're sorry, there's nothing for you. Okay? So, or it comes to a couple of advertisers, and he, we filled out one. We took advantage of the summer. We used the summer. We filled out a few. And what ended up happening was he got a call from a salesperson, and they wanted money up front. $2,500, I think, up front to do some grant searching for him. So beware of these. This is one business USA. Discover, connect, grow. Sounds like a great selling proposition. Um, it just be careful. So when you're sending your veterans, because a, a lot of them, and then Andy, you had a you had a credit card data, right? That a lot of veterans are starting their business with what credit yeah. cards? Yes. And, that you know, banks are offering an unsecured line of credit. You know that a credit card. So so you can get that to stop start a franchise, but then you're right. deep in debt, right? Borrowing exactly. from mom and yep. dad, borrowing yep. from brothers and sisters. Yep. So basically, this is one that's just not that great. Once you fill it out, let me show you another one. Um, this is. The office of just a, two, a click, right? Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, do you qualify? Here's another one. This also is from the government SBA website. And you fill out all this information, and then it comes back and tells you. Oh, oh, how do I do that then? How do I take it off of? Just drag it. I have it on my slide. I got it. I can do this. Yeah, thank you. I can print out my slides too if you want. I have them on slides. Government grant me. Government grant me. Business grants for veterans. Okay. And again, you fill this all out, and what it's going to do is just put you in some kind of loop where you're going to start getting some phone calls, and they want money up front um, or a service. Now we did go ahead and pay. We paid thirty-nine dollars for one month of a, of a grant search system, but the grants out there were very. Um, nothing, nothing that was helpful to us. Uh, we just wanted some seed money. He just needs some money to get to get his truck or whatever he needs to get off the ground. Um, it, not, not for a startup, okay? Not for a startup. Let me show you one when you're done writing that down. That is good. Oh, um, say governmentgrantme.com. What? Oh, we're going to the next website. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that going to be okay? Office of the Capitol. Excuse me, Greta, is that a government website? Or this is a link that's on the SBA website. Wow. Yeah. Send you to one of these. Government grant me. Okay. <clears throat> the other one, too, the access finan financing. And when you go to the SBA, it's a great website, and there's a lot of helpful information for veterans, but, but it, it talks about lending. So even when you click on the grant button, it says you need to go borrow money. So, so there's a lot of loan information out there. So unfortunately, I'm finding even a lot of my veterans that are coming to me that want to open their business, they don't have good credit. 
or they don't have, right? I mean, mm -hmm. are we seeing this? Mm -hmm. They just don't have enough to get a bank loan. I think you guys know that too, but, but that's where they're leading to funding. Okay, let me show you a good one. And that is going to be, do, 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 the Office of Capital. Okay, this is a, a legitimate grant offered by the SBA. Uh, Small Business Innovation Research Program. You're already probably aware of this. Is that what you guys are filling out? That's what we help people do. <laughs> That's right? what you help them yes. do. Yes. Good. Okay, let us know. Yes. Yes. Too bad. Yes. <laughs> so this is. Um, you, can you tell us a little bit? bit can you tell us a little bit about what they want? They want technical type businesses. Well, well it's. Cool. it's yeah, it's just usually, Janice, you, you probably should help me out here on this. But my, but it's basically government provided grants for the commercialization of technology. Okay. I mean, okay. is that, is that, pretty good. is that pretty good? Yeah. Okay. I, I, know, <laughs> and, and, go ahead. I just know we help people get them, you know, I don't know. <laughs> There are uh, a number of government uh, agencies that are looking for solutions. And one of the ways they do that is with the Small Business Innovative Research Grant or Small Business STTR. I can't remember what the T stands for right now. But, but basically, uh, if you have a veteran who has a solution, and, and they may very well have some great solutions given the, the, you know, the work that they've been doing for the government, they can uh, partner with someone to kind of walk them through the proposal process. It's pretty technical, but it can be done. So the key is to find somebody who knows how to to do that successfully. And 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 they and sometimes the the solution isn't. Sometimes the need isn't all that well defined. And so there's a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. that the veteran would have in terms of doing that. So the grant helps you develop that idea, and then if you're successful, there's a round two of grants that can be uh, obtained too, and then of course lots of business opportunities, hopefully. Yeah, can you just uh, scroll down to show the qualifications? Qualifications? Yeah. <clears throat> what are you asking me to scroll? I don't know how to scroll. I think you just like put your two fingers on the pad and slide down. There was a question, how much money do they get for these? It's okay, well, Greta, it doesn't matter. It kind of varies. I've seen them from a couple hundred thousand, to seven hundred so thousand. I'm sorry, you're going to use your match. Really, she, she needs it, to... It, it really varies based on the problem that they're trying to solve. As I was saying, <laughs> i got to remember about the microphone. It really varies based on the size of the problem that they're trying to solve. So you can get some really nice money. I've seen them from a couple hundred thousand dollars, seven hundred fifty millions and, and up. Here? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, just yeah, yeah. Uh, the reason I wanted to show that is like, I guess to reinforce what I'm saying before, you know, one of the things that we found the veteran population really want is they want to be able to trust the folks who are advocating on their behalf. And Greta just spoke to uh, dedicating a lot of her time over the summer working one-on-one -on -one with a student of, her, of hers, which is amazing, you know, <clears throat> that she was uh, A, able to do that, willing to do that, wanting to do that, and what a great thing for that uh, student of hers, you know, to have somebody advocating for her and saying, whoa, this looks a little sketchy here, I don't know if this is right, whereas they might be left, you know, off on their own. Um, so it's very important that when you develop programs, whether they be funding, programs, academic programs, um, community-based programs around veterans, that you walk the walk and that you're extremely authentic about what it is you're doing because veterans will read right through that. You know, you can maybe burn them once, but if you do that, uh, it's over. You know, there no one's gonna wanna come through your program. Uh, you will lose almost all of your credibility that you have within that community. So it's very important to walk delicately into that space and make sure that the, that the things you're exposing the veteran population to um, have been vetted by yourself and a team of yours um, on behalf of that uh, demographic. And that's going to be important when we start filling out those business model canvases, um, your key partners. So the business model canvas under key, key partners um, will be people to help you vet. So you could go visit someone like Janice mm -hmm. to make sure that you know, where, where is the proper place to be able to find this funding. So this is a good example, it's a little key learning before we put you out to work on your own canvases. Okay, real, real quick, I'll wrap up. We did Kickstarter instead. 
And we got a little cash. We got a little cash. <laughs> well, well, you can't go to Kickstarter and say, give me a million dollars, I want to start my business. So we did an event, and it did okay. And he raised enough money to pay his rent for the month. So, okay. yeah, with his equipment and stuff, 500 bucks or something. But that was our last resort, and it yeah. worked okay. I think we could have expanded. We did, we, we did it in literally like 50, 50 minutes or something. But I think you could, have, you could expand on that. So Kickstarter was a... And, and I think, a, a I think on that front, it's important with funding and <coughs> initiatives related to funding that the one thing you want to make sure you do is you want to not set up especially a veteran in this case, but really any uh, person aspiring to, to pursue entrepreneurship for failure, you know? And can you get loans and financing for a business that ultimately is going to fail in nine months after you get that funding? Yes, you can. Um, but I think the goal should always be to not allow a business to actually get access to funding that is doomed to fail anyways. You know, our goal should always be to try to prevent that. Um, so when they actually get funding, it's a sustainable kind of process, which then leads to uh, greater credibility for your institutions. Great, thank, thank you guys. I'm gonna, uh, if you're following along with me on the agenda, what we basically just did was the insight to applying for grants and developing proposal content. Um, so I'm gonna flip back up here to strategies for leveraging existing campus veteran service offices for uh, entrepreneurial initiatives. And when you all were introducing yourselves to me, I was thinking to myself, okay, they need to be up on the panel. So I think what I'd like to do is um, use everybody for this conversation about how you are leveraging your um, veterans offices on your campuses um, for any of your initiatives, if, if you are. Um, of course, we are gonna share, that the panel members can share what we're doing, and, and myself as well, uh, some of the things that we're doing. Does anybody have anything hot off the press that they would like to share that, that they might be collaborating with their veterans services um, offices? Wonderful. Hi, uh, this is Waverly Coleman, Community College Philadelphia. Um, I recently reorganized my uh, team uh, because of some uh, cuts at the college and one of the things that I charged them to do was to be more innovative in their thinking. Instead of saying we don't have this and we don't have that, start thinking about just innovative and creative ways to do new things. And so one of my uh, coordinators came up with the idea of working with our veterans coordinator to get a lot of our what we refer to as open enrollment continuing education courses approved for veterans credit and we had never done that before and she worked with him and got a whole boatload of our programs approved for veterans credit I mean veterans uh, I guess benefits so I haven't tracked yet how many have actually come through but in our brochure we actually highlight them and say approved for veterans benefits or whatever for a lot of our open enrollment programs. Sort of the idea of what you mentioned earlier. We are doing it too, I'll talk about it. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that because when we first were putting together our certificate, uh, Hillsborough Community College put together a 12 credit certificate in entrepreneurship and innovation and uh, we, we went to our veterans office and did the same thing. Actually, I lie, we kind of were ignorant and didn't know that there were certain classes that would not be paid for for the veterans unless they were a part of a degree program. We, we got an education by fire, um, and so we, we did what we needed to do. We got on the list, um, made everything right. Remember that, Andy? We were running around trying yep. to get everything, because we didn't know. We didn't come to a conference like this. <laughs> and do a nice pre, pre um, conference workshop on the, the right things to do to, yeah. to be able to get them um, into the, the credit side of the house. Does somebody else have a thought over here that wanted to share? Did I see anything? Okay. Um, me, Greta, you ready? Because I lost my thought. Uh, we're still talking about leveraging our, um, our own veteran services departments for any of our programs. My, just my veterans, um, we have very, very active uh, veteran student government and VA office. Um, St. Petersburg College, we have about five or six different campuses, um, so we're a little spread out, but each campus, we have three very large campuses, and each one has a very active um, veterans administration, and uh, Jeff Cavanaugh is the head of, of all of that, and he's just been so open to anything we want to do. So the very first project we worked on, which I'll talk a little bit more when we get onto the business canvas, was um, 
we give, we give three credit. We give them the credit for the first class, Intro to Entrepreneurship, when they go through this uh, course that I'll talk about a little bit later. But um, basically, so we're working on the matriculation agreement already. Articulation, is that mm -hmm. the right word? Yeah. Articulation. So, um, but they're open to everything. We're leveraging them. They're, getting, they're not only getting us students to come in through the program, we actually have had a 30% a 30 rate of, of success. So out of the students who've gone through our, this course, this training course I'll talk about in a minute, um, we're, they're, they're, they're enrolling and we've gotten uh, full-time students out of it. So it's been very successful and they're helpful. They're, they're our recruiters, they get the promotions, they get the word out. Uh, so they're, they're, they're ready. So I guess we're fortunate in that um, we're, they're ready and are open to anything we want to do. And I have to second that emotion. I think that the one of the best methods of recruiting into our programs are the students themselves. I think that we often overlook students as a key partner in much of what we're doing. Um, they, having gone through the program, they're they're passionate. Uh, they've learned wonderful things that have helped them transition. We're hearing a lot about transition skills moving from the military into the private sector and how um, the community college has helped them with those skills. So something that we take for granted like teaching a marketing class or an accounting class and we're weaving uh, other skills into those programs um, such as how to behave in a meeting if you will or how do you introduce yourself. Little things like that um, by using an active learning type of methodology. And what we're hearing back from our veteran students is, wow, I learned more in this class than what the government tried teaching me when I transitioned out for however many weeks that was. Um, so they, they're a wonderful, wonderful resource to talk about what your college is doing and be your key marketer. There's no, no doubt about it that, to, that the students are a key partner for us. Um, I just wanted to add something to it. Yeah, just, and I, I wanted you to talk about that too. Okay, uh, I have this okay. thing. So, um, you know, one, first of all, when you first develop a program, uh, there is always a uh, tendency to put a lot of effort into building the program, putting it together, and then hoping people will show up to engage in the program. And that's a terrible, terrible mistake to make. You know, you can never build something, in my view, as an entrepreneur, but just in general, and, and rely on such a weak emotion as hope that people are just gonna show up organically for this thing that you've worked so hard to create. So what needs to happen, I think, is almost like a relentless level of um, a promotion of these uh, initiatives that you start. Uh, there has to be constant community engagement and outreach. It can't be in fits and starts. It can't be, you know, we're going to go on a four month, you know, get out there and shake hands and, you know, fire up the folks and then let it fizzle. Because people are going to read through that. They're going to be, oh, they just did it for that. You know, they're not real. They don't, they're not committed to what it is that they speak so passionately about. So you have to be, uh, number one, you've got to be willing to allocate that level of passion, time, and energy. Now, in the case of Beth and myself, and I think for Greta as well, because we're full-time faculty members, um, our compensation is based on teaching. You know, uh, Beth and I are required to teach five classes, and if we want to, we can teach uh, additional courses, which we do. Um, but we're not required to build programs. Uh, we don't get compensated for it. We're not required to go out into the community uh, to build new partnerships. Um, we don't get compensated for that. But we spend an enormous amount of our time in that space because we believe in what it is we're doing and you know we recognize the importance of, of doing that. So uh, the first thing I just want to say is you've got to be deeply, deeply committed to whatever it is you're doing for the long haul. Not for the short run, but for the long haul. Because these things require that level of commitment. It, and it's very hard, like Beth speaking about our academic program, the certificate program, that our students that have come through the program become evangelists for the program, which is great. But what do you do before you have those evangelists? You know, how, do you, how do you get them? To become, you know, how do you get them to take that leap with you, right? So, uh, and that speaks to, uh, like in our case, the Veterans Affairs Office, and I, I'll speak about this event briefly. 
This event, which is a one-day um, symposium for veterans and active duty service members, what it did for us primarily was it allowed us to, to link the Veterans Affairs Office at Hillsborough Community College. And we have over 45,000 students, a little over 3,000 of them are, are veterans. We have also have five campuses like St. Pete College, so we're very dispersed, but we have one uh, VA office. Um, so it allowed us to interact with that office, allowed us to interact with the advisors that specialize with helping veterans on all of the campuses. It allowed us to interface with the local government. It allowed us to interface with community partners, you know, entrepreneurs and other organizations that support entrepreneurship and kind of pull all of this stuff together into this, this event. And I Which we should say, this event was done prior to the launch of the program. Mm -hmm. So we had no program in October of last year. There, there, there was no 12 credit certificate for, entre or excuse me, for veterans or anyone else. Uh, this was designed to kind of be the boom bang uh, to let people know of the program moving forward. And, and also to let them know that our program that we were launching in the following spring, which was last spring, that entrepreneurship might not be for you. Like come to this event, find out what all this buzz is about start up this and start up that and self-employment and you know all that stuff um, but maybe it's not for you and gosh well that's awesome too because while they don't enroll in our program we've saved them the aggravation and frustration of having to go through that experience if it just is not for them so that was another great outcome of that event um, and, we, and we find that this event now is growing organically but honestly still requires and will require for the next three four five years an intense amount of involvement and pushing by us as the lead faculty and organizers of it to kind of galvanize people because it, it just never reaches that it's like momentum it takes a long time before it can self-sustain and spin on its own um, and we're, we're like it's like Beth and I are at the bottom of this momentum wheel trying to push it a little bit every it day it does it, it rolls back on us but eventually we we get a turn and then the next turn becomes easier but it takes a long time so and a good, I, oh i'm sorry no, that's okay and a good example of that it may be hard to see down here but um this event is now sponsored by uh hillsborough county which is the county that our college is in uh they have a grant called an edi2 grant last year uh we're with sandra we had uh won the um coleman grant through NACI, and this event was through Coleman. This year, um, we have the funding through uh, another grant. And I think what's cool about trying to do marketing, recruitment, PR, all that kind of cool stuff, um, and again, buzz around veterans, is a one-time, one-day event. They're very sexy in the world of PR. And um, in this case, the county has small grants of about $5,000 that it doesn't take much to get them. They're just trying to get their momentum going about entrepreneurship and economic development in our county and so uh, things like this are very easy for them to see the budget numbers and um, be able to award the grants for so I thought I, I would just marry those two little thoughts and together. what we do is we use the event even if you know, obviously if you're not not everybody sponsors an event last year we had some you know the Tampa Bay Rays were a sponsor and so on and so forth but we use the event to pull in like our SBDC and uh, the Tampa, you know, the USF SBDC, uh, which is the largest one in Florida, and we use it to bridge our veteran population to these other amazing resources that are available in the community. That maybe maybe a certificate program at Hillsborough Community College isn't for you. Maybe you just need to go to the SBDC. Maybe you need to meet with a score representative. Maybe you need to go through Greta's non-credit. You know, eight week uh, oh, cre credit. oh credit credit okay eight week credit uh, free uh, program. Uh, you know, we're not saying we're everything for everybody, but this event at least identifies for everybody what those things are that are out there. You know, and I think that that's a really important way of framing is never to make it about you, but to make it about the attendees and to give them all of the options that are available. Uh, we really frown upon self-promotion at these events because we want people who are speaking from a position of authority to speak about content and value to the attendees. 
which Andy is so great about jumping all over my agenda. He has so many <laughs> ideas, and he's got to get them all out at one time. Well, you, like, said it was, you said it was a dynamic agenda. Not for though. you, for the rest of us. <laughs> There's a couple, there's uh, I think two more things that I would like to try to get through because we're running a little bit behind on time because I, I really, really want to um, work on those canvases with you. Um, so I want to touch, that's right where I'm going, I want to touch on the, um, the resources piece. I want to move back there so we can bring in Janice again into the conversation and a little bit about those of you that are out there. Um, about resources that are available in your communities. I mentioned the Hillsborough County grant. Um, so let's talk resources for a minute, whether it be financial resources, hu resources, human resources, recruiting resources, whatever might be out there that helps us uh, do what we do for the local veteran community. Let me go real quick because mine's real quick. Yeah. We're working with SCORE and um, they, they, are, they will be here tonight. I, I arranged to have someone from Texas who's very, very involved. He'll be here tonight. What I'll do is, I guess he couldn't get here this morning. I don't know. There was a mix up. I take complete credit for that. <laughs> but it was the last minute thing. Um, credit Joe, Joe Daly, he's on the, the list you've got there. Um, when he comes in tonight, he's going to come to the opening dinner. I'll, t I'll do a Twitter thing. So if you're following Twitter, Twitter, and I'll find you. I'll find you guys too. Uh, he's doing great stuff in Texas, in the greater Texas area, with veterans. And he answered our LinkedIn uh, request to have someone come out. But just real quick, score. I'm working with them. They're doing everything from transitioning to putting them through our our credit program. So that's all I have to say. Great part. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, kind of mention one thing as you're working on your business canvas model later. A lot of you mentioned some grants that you receive, and uh, some of those grants may be continuing grants. Very often, though, they are one-time grants. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of remind you, if you hadn't thought about it already, just to kind of use those one-time grants and think of them as seed money. Yes. Seed money. Mm -hmm. be because the work that we're doing is so important, we need to continue it. And if we can use seed money to develop some great new programs and initiatives, then you can find uh, sustaining money, like you guys did. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, thank you for the plug for SBDCs. You guys rock. You guys rock it. SBDCs rock. <laughs> so we are here to um, to do what we can to add value to whatever is necessary to help these businesses start, grow, and be successful, and and continue to be there because they employ people, the people have families, build strong communities, the state, and the, and the name. That's our work. That, that's our work. We do it in the framework of the SBDC uh, program, but our work is to build those communities and, and the places that we, we live. And fortunately for us, the SBDC program is built around collaborating leveraging efforts and resources so you know that's our job and it's our passion uh, too so we're, we're delighted um, events like the one that you guys did in Hillsborough are uh, um, great to do we've done a number of those and they have great success because you're bringing in all the people being in business is very exhilarating it's very challenging I had a business for 20 some years and it's one of the most rewarding things uh, I've ever done in my life but uh, it, it, it's never a dull moment, so you're not gonna just truck along just kind of mm -hmm. in some ho-hum place. <laughs> you can be very excited and very nervous, too, depending on what, what's going on. But it opens the door for so many opportunities. It's a very viable way of earning a living, and, and so it's something that the work that we do fits very nicely with workforce programs that are going mm -hmm. on in your colleges and in your community. And, and as Andy pointed out, being in business sounds great, uh, but I, I get really scared when somebody says, I want to start my own business because I want to be my own boss. <laughs> that scares me. I'll make a lot of money. You're right, I'll make a lot of money. You're going to have lots of bosses, they're called clients. So <laughs> the, the, the thing is, our part of our work is to help um, our students, and I'll use the word generically, understand that they have options. And some options mean that they should go forth in the entrepreneurship path, and some mean they definitely should not. Mm -hmm. and, and there are many great careers that they can mm -hmm. pursue. And if they decide to go in the entrepreneurship path, then they can do it as a sole practitioner, 
and that's a very um, honorable, powerful way to earn a living, or you can hire a bunch of people, you know, whatever you need to do. So we're, we're set up to help them sort through all of that, and we need everybody, everybody's organization to really do that the way that our, our uh, students need us. Mm -hmm. Really, we are very active in the Boots to Business program, which is a national priority of the SBA. <clears throat> it is driven by the SBA district offices, but SBDCs have been very involved in that. It was developed out of Syracuse University, but SBDCs, um, because we're we're good partners to the SBA, we uh, participated in in that. And anybody here from Syracuse? Um, I went to college in Oswego, okay. which okay. is north of Syracuse, and I know Syracuse. So, okay. so we, we love Syracuse, but we, 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 we also... You can the, rip it apart, it's okay, go ahead. No, it's all for a good cause. But we, we um, our, our people who did participate in Boots of Business, they know small business, they do counseling and training and what have you, so actually they made some tweaks to the curriculum for Boots to Business. Uh, every, every one of them who mm -hmm. was involved made that, and, and, um, and, and they built in together an amazing team of SBA uh, people, um, uh, successful veteran business owners, SBDC, mm -hmm. other people in the community who, uh, like attorneys and professionals who had to help those. So mm -hmm. we built a team of people, it's not just SBDC, a team of people, again, to give the business owners what, what they needed. And in this case, a lot of the people who go to the Boost to Business program, they may not even stay in our area. You know, a lot of them don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully, we give them something they can use when they come to your area. You know, that, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And so we we work with the SVA though and uh, Syracuse University and revise the curriculum, because the bottom line is, while um, uh, people in the military are very good at certain things, a lot of them are executing well. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily most of them are developing the execution strategy. Yeah, exactly. Right, and so what we needed to do was to come up with a user-friendly business planning model and what have you to help them, and Boost to Business does that. So, just a lot of the things that you guys are talking about today will help them because it has to be user-friendly for them. It has to be something that makes sense mm -hmm. for them, gives them the fundamentals, but does it in a way where it is um, workable, workable for them. I want to touch on the partners a little bit. Um, again, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, what, what, this is. <laughs> my, my question is what would you see as some uh, basic kinds of services that uh, a local college or community college could expect from an SBDC in this area? See, Janice is on it now. She needs to wait for me. Uh, thank you. The, uh, the basic services you should expect from us, whether we are connected to um, a, your college or, or not, is that we uh, would provide one-on-one -on -one counseling at no charge to the people that we serve. We offer uh, uh, lots of training from the very basic should I start a small business type of training and um, increasingly more in, in the advanced levels as well. Some of that training is provided at no cost, but um, there might be a cost, but it's usually going to be quite reasonable. We found that our attendance is a lot better when we charge something, yeah. which is kind of interesting. It gives, value. Yeah. It, it gives it back so they have a little skin in the game. But we try to make it um, affordable to them. So we've invested in things that we think are important for small business success, like understanding how to make good cash flow decisions. And so we found a curriculum that's awesome for that, so we try to work it out where we, we invest part of the cost, the participant pays part of the cost, and then we get a sponsor. You know, So the services you can expect from the SBDC are whatever they offer, because it is a, a taxpayer-developed uh, program. Our uh, federal partner for that is the Small Business Administration. So they put in federal money, and that's matched by state and local money. It could be state universities. Mm -hmm. It could be, in, like, in Arizona, is primarily uh, the community college system. Uh, corporations, etc., and we're always looking for money, like from the county and what have yeah. you. You know, so we're so all looking for money. yeah, <laughs> we're all looking for money. So the thing is, you can expect whatever services are offered by your local SBDCs to be available to you. And what I have found pretty powerful 
is where you, you bring your resources and you connect with the SBDCs and other partners in mm -hmm. the area and say, here's what we want to do for our small businesses. Mm -hmm. what, can, what can I bring to the table? What can you bring to the table? And how can we make these dollars go further? Because everybody, farther, because everybody is short of money. We're all short of money. And even if we're not short of money, I mean, if we're gov since we're government funded, you know, one year federal money is high, and the next year <laughs> it's low, and then yeah. the state is high, and the state is low. You know, so it just, just kind of varies. So in the times that we're in, we need to partner and leverage with each other. Our, the, the people that give us money are looking for us to be able to do that. And so when we can work out a partnership arrangement and then go to them to say, you don't have to choose between funding us or funding them. We've already kind of worked it out. I, I, I have heard uh, grantors respond and, uh, really positively to that. And they, you know, we've experienced it in our network. And I've heard other people speak of that because they don't want to choose. And I'll just give you two other, just in uh, our region with our SBDC, two specific services that are offered. Uh, one is for uh, somebody that would like to become officially registered as a minority owned business. They have a workshop there that can help you uh, to go through that process and properly become registered uh, so you can gain the benefit of that status. And uh, the second one is just in terms of business formation for somebody who, like we teach that, like different business formation options available. Uh, we can't make students in a uh, certificate program uh, form a corporation or an LLC or any of that. Uh, we encourage it and we will work with them on it, but they also, the SBDCs offer really good programming in that space as well. Charles. Have you had time for Charles? Oh, yeah. I just had a little comment, kind of, kind of what you said to that. I was, in, in, my, oh, I'm sorry. in our particular county, we had so many people, you know, our community college has a small business center, the local university has a small business center, we have the Economic Development Commission, uh, you know, we had our continuing ed program, our credit programs, but so many of us served on each other's advisory boards. <laughs> we're, we're actually right now working on something, and we named it Pitt County Vine. Not the app, but that was one thing. But it's vertically integrated network for entrepreneurs, and we're actually developing a website now, and it'll have a synopsis for you know what services each one provides, and so a, kind of a one-stop place where people can figure out who do they need to go see, mm -hmm. because we were duplicating efforts in so many instances, uh, and we're meeting quarterly is what we're doing, and then we all share to each other what we're working on, and and that that has has been real successful. Hopefully our website will be up real soon. So that awesome. kind of addresses exactly what you were talking about. Powwow, do you want to mention the powwow? Yeah, there's a lot, there's quite a few. Yeah, um, actually I'm gonna hold on it because I wanna, I wanna touch on something um, with you, Greta, matter of fact. Can you talk to us a little bit about the, um, the non-credit and the credit college program? So that's your um, Veterans Fast Launch Initiative. That, um, yeah. When it hit some of the national things that everybody can, then we'll dig down into more local resources that you can partner with. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll just real briefly. Yep. Um, basically, SCORE, SCORE is heading this one up. It's the um, Fast Launch Initiative, and it's going to include everything from th their real focus is on transitioning. Their real focus is on getting the resources to veterans when they come out. Here, here, here's where you can go for the business centers. Here's where you can get your resources for getting back into the game. Um, I sat even on an airplane to, on the way over here with a Navy veteran who, who told me when he got out after 20 years, he was scared. He didn't even know how to dress. He didn't know how to. And, and, and Beth and Andy are working with a student who really wants to focus on that too. So their la fast launch initiative is everything from getting you ready for a new career. And I think they're going to put them through the same kind of thing you were talking about, mm -hmm. Andy, where you know a, a business may not be your thing. So this whole conference is entrepreneurial mindset. And, and I think that's where we're going. And I actually got certified through Eckerd College. If you know Eckerd College in St. Petersburg, I'm a certified entrepreneurial mindset. They changed the name. It was. I saw that, yeah. Saw that. So, but I'm certified, you know Not, that? You are I'm cert certified. You are certified, you're certified. Greta, you're right. Because um, I'm, I'm a management. Certifiable, uh, yes. I'm a management person, so uh, <laughs> they're not here. I don't, think, I don't think they were able to come to the conference, but there'll be some people here representing. They'll be here tomorrow. They're here, they are here. Good, yeah. Eckerd's coming. Yeah. OK, good. So I'll hang out. My Eckerd, I don't need you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm an Eckerd College graduate, so. Go ahead. And, and but, but just real quick, so basically offering through that now, anybody who wants to come through our program, 
we're, we're, we're revising it, and I'm hoping to get some great ideas from you guys today. It was an eight-week, intense type of program, uh, and we're revising that. We're bringing it back to life. And I think it's going to be with a combination of not just starting your business, but getting your feet back in the door. And, and again, I think at the eight weeks, if they don't want to start mm -hmm. a business, yeah. uh, maybe they don't, but, but at least an opportunity to see what's out there. And of course, you know, SCORE does the mentoring. That's, that's the key. So half is instruction, half is mentoring. And if they do want to continue, they get three credits for our first, uh, for our entrepreneurial, our intro to entrepreneurship course. And we're working with our VA also for maybe business courses too. And I just, oh, yeah. What I find uh, great is we did an event like these guys did, but ours is like yours was last year. So it's kind of kicking things off and creating those relationships. And we do find that when, when they're new, there's so much free to pursue through the SBA and through SCORE and through the SBDC that it, it seems like that might be the first route that they want to take before they sign up for a certificate program or things like that. And then if you're looking at helping them decide whether or not to even be, get into entrepreneurship, if it comes to trying to raise money to pursue your programs, do you have uh, ways of measuring that you help someone decide not to go that route? You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the, in other words, qual uh, quantitative measurement of qualitative benefits mm -hmm. because I think if we started sharing surveys that we developed to measure things like that and we happen to be measuring the same things that could be very powerful right. for us and not reinventing the wheel and creating aggregate st statistics because score we're measuring the same thing. Score keeps track when they come through our thing. Score, I, score, just real quick. Score, score keep track of that. So, but I, I don't think we have it in anything. So, I, I'd be willing to talk to you the next few days to see how we can. I have this thing oh. here. I, I, I also just want. <laughs> the three of us are all. The other hand is just. Um, I also want to say that um, you know the field of entrepreneurship has really uh, transformed uh, since I first got engaged with it back in 1983. Yeah, uh, back then. It's a while ago, um, and it's transformed because a lot of the conventional um, sort of older ways of engaging in business launch. Um, just e e today just aren't really applicable as much uh, or as relevant as much. So while the SBA is an amazing uh, uh, government agency and while the SBDCs are tremendous resources and SCORE is a great resource and all of these more traditional modes of interaction are great and should be used, I would never want you to not uh, think about all of the wide array of other product offerings, many of which you'll learn about this week here at NACI, uh, that are rich and powerful and meaningful and current and impactful. Um, uh, the Kauffman Foundation has one, I think it's called Fast Track. We don't use it, uh, but um, a community, a, um, a, a, a tech support group, uh, entrepreneurship support group called the Tampa Bay Innovation Center uses it. Um, I went to guest lecture there um, about you know uh, marketing and some other things, uh, and it was great. It was all veterans, and it was a great program. Um, the Ice House Project could certainly, uh, and that curriculum could certainly be used as a uh, a program that is for people uh, developing a mindset around whether or not this is for you or not for you, and to gain those valuable tools. So there's so many like really cool things out there. Uh, you just have to pick the ones that are most appropriate for that type of veteran that you're you're working with. And what you said is, it just hit me standing here. This is why we're all gathered in this room today. I think that the most well-positioned resource in a community to be able to, for lack of a better word, house all the resources or be able to triage the resources is the local community college. I mean, we have community in the name of our college, for heaven's sakes. So, you know, who who... Where is that one place that you go that you can now be branched out into all these other resources like an SBDC or mm -hmm. small business or whatever the case may be? I want to um, touch on a couple things and you guys can help me with this one. The, um, the partners, because this was a really nice segue, how we're the community college and then how do we find the partners? And I, I'll just touch on one for a second if you don't mind listening to my voice. Um, one of the 
most amazing things that has happened to me over the past two years uh, since we really delved in, dived in, delved in, something Dove, along those lines. Dove in? Dove in. <laughs> Um, to see, I didn't do the clapping exercise, so my brain isn't um, working properly. Um, is how rich the ecosystem is in the Tampa Bay area of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And until we got outside of our institution and started talking to people, we had no idea how deep and rich it went. And what I mean by that is the dedication of community partners to want to come into a classroom and talk to, sometimes it's only 15 students, and these are professional people who want to share their knowledge about accounting or their knowledge about law or whatever the topic might be, or social media, that's another big one. And, and so I think that and unless we start jumping over the walls of our own institution and finding out what resources are in the ecosystem, we're never going to be able to leverage them, whether it be for veterans specifically or um, if it's for our general student population. Um, so recently, we are digging into the veteran uh, community even deeper because this is our second event and again the event kind of gives you cover you know what I mean like the event gives you the reason to want to go have a meeting with somebody you know we're having this great event we want to tell you what we're doing and we want you to be a part of it come in and be a judge for a shark tank come in and be a keynote speaker and then they feel all important you know and and you can start leveraging the partnership so um, and I'm gonna throw it back over here to the panel because they're the ones that are really supposed to be talking not me but <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I said that. Um, so some of those regional um, community college partners, and we, again, we want to hear from you if you have anything different. Can you guys touch on anything from incubators, accelerators, networking groups? Um, because there's pros and cons to networking groups, but in Tampa, we have two that are really good. We, we vetted them. They're really, really good. You know, and of course, there's the shady ones that are trying to sell you something all the time. Um, <laughs> but I'll let you guys touch on all the resources. I just kind of gave you an idea of some of them. I'll start with I just recently had the opportunity, we all know our Chambers of Commerce, but we recently, uh, they revitalized in St. Petersburg. And, and if you're not familiar with St. Pete, Tampa, everything's pretty close. So, but we all, again, do the same thing, so we're, we're working on that. But the St. Pete Chamber put together a great women's group um, for entrepreneurs, and they're trying it. So I'm a part of that, too. So that's the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we have a big incubator in downtown St. Petersburg. Um, Tech Garage, they're calling it. It's beautiful. Uh, their grand opening is this week, and uh, that's another incubator. And what they'll do is they'll draw on us for support. So they'll ask faculty members to go down and spend their time, same kind of thing. The speakers, the speakers in the community, people who've already done really, really well, will, will be the speakers, will be the mentors. So we'll dedicate our time for free uh, to hold some office hours and things like that. That's a big incubator we just put in. So, um, yes, I'm sure you Yes, thank you. There's this one other thing I want to, to say before I uh, no, fulfill my assignment. <laughs> Andy did it, but anyway. Um, it's all my fault. Yeah. When we're talking to um, potential business owners and taking them through, should I start a small business or this event or that event, mm -hmm. and at the end of the event, it's determined that they really shouldn't start the business, uh, I, one of the things I've, I've uh, learned that's valuable is to help them understand how what they just learned is valuable to them regardless of whether they start a business or not. Because if they're going to work somewhere, they are going to work as part of a business. Okay? And understanding where you fit in that business's income statement or financial report is very important because you then can add value to the people that you, you work for to the top. And that, that's, everybody who works for an organization doesn't get that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in terms of partnership, we thrive on partnerships. We um, have an initiative for statewide incubator support. And uh, we framed it that way because we know that small businesses need assistance no matter how they start or where they start or what tool they do uh, use. Um, some of them survive in spite of themselves. <laughs> But we try to be there for them who, who want to have a better experience uh, along the way. Uh, working with incubators is generally stated because not all incubators are the same. 
In Arizona, we have a number of incubators that are organized around social entrepreneurship. That's very, very huge here. And, and I think it's pretty, pretty cool, too, because not only do they want to make money, but they want to make a difference, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have people uh, in our, our staff that are interested in that. And the technical um, incubators, uh, the bioscience-focused incubators, we have one with our uh, Gateway Community College, and that's very new for community colleges in Arizona. I believe that's the only one that's connected with the community college. Others are coming. Uh, but that's that's another way where we can add value so that the incubators can do what they're really good at and create you know the the environment and the support system and then we can come in and be a part of that support system so they don't have to spend resources uh, on that um, we work with the colleges uh, to make sure that either our staff or some of our business owners are a part of their classes to get that practical experience one, one request that's come up um, periodically is when a business owner is looking for somebody to hire as an intern. And I don't know, do we do any of those? Um, that seems like an opportunity for, for me to try to you know, uh, fine tune that. Our community college system is kind of big, so sometimes people can get lost in it when they're trying to find something. <laughs> but I, because of my workforce background and then now the SBDC, I know there's a solution there, so that's what, we, what we're trying to do is really Provide high impact services to our colleges all over the all over the state, and I agree that the community college is a perfect mechanism for doing the type of work that we do because you're so focused on the on the communities, um, and we try to just tailor what we do to meet the needs of the local area. And every SBDC uh, in the country is organized that way, so whether they have a state university as a host or um, governor's office or commerce department. We're a needs-based organization, so it's important to us to understand the needs in your area and develop something that kind of works with that. That's good. OK. Anything else on that topic? Yep. I've got a couple yeah. of things. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so. We love each other, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so again, uh, where a uh, Beth and I are sort of positioned at our school is uh, the student population we serve, as I'm sure is the case with uh, most of you, is an extremely diverse student population. And we believe it's very representative of the population at large within the Tampa Bay area. So um, we have this very, very rich pool of um, you know, entrepreneurial uh, organizations, uh, incubators, uh, accelerators, a whole host of different things, but many of them are out of reach for our students. You know, uh, there's criteria that you have to meet to be able to get into the accelerator. Your business has to be at a certain level with certain sales and so on and so forth. Yep. So there's a, there's a bit of a um, disconnection there. So what we've done is, uh, when I first got to Hillsborough Community College, we have um, a business advisory board, and there were four members on the business advisory board at that time. This was in uh, 2012. <clears throat> we now have uh, 38 um, uh, members of our business advisory board. Um, we've sp and, and much of that membership has come from uh, members referring others to, to get engaged with what, what it is we're doing. Now, what has that done? Well, it's done a lot for the uh, members of the advisory board because it's created new connections for them, you know, to sort of like a, sort of like a, a very focused uh, networking group for them because we're always thinking, what can we do for our partners, not what, hey, can you do for us? So that's been a rich experience for them. But it's led to us meeting um, some really, really uh, amazing people that um, are deeply, deeply uh, uh, entrenched in the network fabric of the Tampa Bay area. Uh, so two of them in particular, uh, one's called uh, the Tampa Bay Business Owners uh, Group, and the other is called Working Women of Tampa Bay. They're membership organizations focused on entrepreneurship for their specific membership. So what have we done there? Well, we've leveraged this opportunity to get them to reach out to their membership to uh, do really two things for us. Number one, uh, get speakers to come onto our campus 
uh, and have an opportunity for our students to sort of cross over that bridge into the business community and engage directly with folks that uh, can have a meaningful impact on their business development. And the second thing we do is to foster the opportunity for internships. Um, internships are an amazing and often overlooked uh, critical element of this whole process. Because as students consider launching their business, what better way to realize whether it's, it's, it's you're ready for that or not than to work with somebody who's actually doing it in the real world and you're learning that it's not like the movie about Facebook where you code and, and then you make a gazillion dollars. You know, it's what's happening, what is that pain of ha having your own business in between the dorm room, coding, garage, creation of Apple to the, the gazillion dollars? Because that's what entrepreneurship is, is it's really hard, right? So it's better for them to know, gosh, I can't, what do I do? Do I pay my rent or my employees this month? Uh, and realize that's a reality of business ownership than to just go, you know, for it. So that's kind of what we've done with our community partners is leverage that aspect of it uh, to both help our partners by connecting them with other folks, but also bridging our students into that professional workspace. And now, oh, okay, a question. No, I just wanted to share something. You okay? We love sharing. I just wanted to um, expand upon something that Janice shared. So the Maricopa Small Business Development Center actually has two full-time business analysts at two different incubators. They're both uh, technology focused. One of them is sort of pure traditional technology focused and manufacturing, and the other is bioscience. And of course, that's the that's the incubator that Janice is referring to that is actually hosted um, on the campus of Gateway Community College. It's called CEI, the Center for Entrepreneurial Innovation. And you have an opportunity to uh, take a tour of that facility as well as their student incubator called Fahrenheit Labs, which is actually run by the Maricopa Small Business Development Center and it's at our office. Uh, it's Tuesday afternoon, and at the risk of being self-promotional, I'm sorry, but, um, and I guess Greg has, has stepped away, but the photographer um, for today's session, um, Greg Bullock, who works for CEI as the marketing and public relations person, he and I are actually sharing our success story, our small business, Arizona Small Business Development Center slash CEI success story um, on Tuesday morning. Um, from um, 11.30 to 12 12.45. We're actually part of the Engaged at Every Stage of Entrepreneurship program. It's kind of a, a two-pronged uh, approach, but I, if you're not able to attend, please get my business card. I'd love to share with you our successes, what we've learned, and kind of what some of our next steps are. Um, but I just wanted to piggyback on that since that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Thanks. Perfect. Now we get to take a break. And when we come back, um, let's... Can we take it, make it short since we're about 20 minutes behind schedule? Or, yeah, 10 minutes behind schedule. Are you guys cool with coming back at, um, what is it, 11 o'clock? Yeah, 11 is yeah. good, 10 minutes. And, um, and we're going to listen to Professor Andy Gold explain the business model canvas. <laughs> <laughs> I use professor for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, you need to bring in that one.
sponsors will ask you how many attendees are coming. And as soon as they ask that, after I've talked to them about what the scope of the event is, it's a veterans event, I am kind of, as soon as I ask that, it's telling, because it's telling me that they're more concerned on the return on their investment of that sponsorship than just sponsoring it because it's the right thing to do. And that's, that's the piece, and that's okay. But I'm like, well, we're not for you. And right. meeting over, you know, this is not a, this is not a fit. You know, mm -hmm. we need people who want to sponsor, not because of what they're going to get back from the sponsorship, but because it's simply the right thing to do. You know, like that's that's it. Yeah, you know, that, that's really important. That makes so a lot you, of sense. You wouldn't even. I had to never say this to people, but you wouldn't even have a business to be in a position to sponsor, consider sponsoring, if not for the veterans. So, you know, it's the veterans that have provided you with the freedom to have that business. I see what you're saying. You know, like, and you know, if you can't connect that, we're not free. That's an excellent point. Yeah. You know, I would never say that to somebody because they, they feel embarrassed about that. Yeah. I don't want to seem preachy, but that's how I feel. Right? Well, I think it's a totally valid point. And I'm actually, you know, I'm sensitive to those dynamics too, being the only, like, essentially textbook publisher sitting in the room. Yeah. I'm aware that that's kind of what we're doing, but that's why I mentioned that we're moving towards social enterprise. Yeah. But it's also about the mission. Yeah. So I don't want to be a social entrepreneurial company, just so you know. So Is that right? Yes, I am deeply committed. The mission and purpose of social enterprise. Yeah. That's what I've been doing for the last 20 years. I didn't know that. Yeah. I should have been able to start you more. Oh, that's what's okay. yeah. It's a company, uh, my company's Terrapath, and uh, it started out uh, as an IT consulting company. But the reason I started it was I worked on Wall Street for 12 years, had this like, soul crushing. Experience. I get out. I go work for a friend of mine. Said, David. I think I told this to you on the phone call. The one about going to see the sisters and nuns at Awkward. I don't know if I told this story. I'm not sure. Forgive me. Okay, but I'm not. So I. Um, they, he sends me one day to a nonprofit uh, called Encore Community <laughs> Services, tasked with helping homeless seniors in the Hell's Kitchen area of Manhattan, the mid Midtown West Side of yes. Manhattan. So, so often. And uh, it was amazing. Like it changed my life. Big organization doing amazing stuff. So I went back, and he's like, "Okay, you need to invoice them now." And I was like, "Really? Like have you not been there lately?" And I felt guilty. He's like, "No, no, no. We're a business. They understand." And I begrudgingly did it, but I thought. That's a problem. You know, there's probably many other nonprofits that need IT services, can't afford it, or pay for it, and that takes away from the being able to provide services to their constituents. Could I develop a business model where I could give services away for free to nonprofits and still be able to pay my mortgage, my rent, and this and that? So I launched my company in 1994. Uh, it took me, I started out of my house. It took me about uh, nine months to get out into an office. I hired two people. Uh, it took me another four months to get enough paying customers, law firms, beverage companies, architects, you know, small businesses of you know 50 or fewer employees. And then the profits I was able to generate off of our fees for those services, I then used to pay people to go provide services for free to nonprofits. So we now service over 70 nonprofits in the New York City metro area for free, funded totally through paying customers. And it's an amazing, like I haven't made a lot of money doing it, but that hasn't been why I did it. It's been an amazing business model because the paying customers love doing business with us because they feel like they're changing the world because they know what we do with the profits. That's very cool. We feel like we're helping nonprofits to allocate precious resources. They have more to the constituency the they're trying to service. And the nonprofits benefit for that very reason as well. So it's like a win, win, win. And that's kind of what I've been doing. So that's been a great. It's been a great. Really good. No, that's okay. Oh, I'm here. Are you here for a few days?
happening with you, but that's what my sense is. There's a tendency to diverge from your core vision and to instead try to be wise and tactical, something for a wider audience. And that's what I'm saying. Because either your business model is going to succeed based upon what it is and what the purpose of it is. because businesses launch that should really never launch to begin with. And uh, it is this type of approach and others similar to it that have begun the process of transforming that away from not tell me why your business is so great before I invest, but show me that your business actually has traction in the real world before I even consider investing with you. I'm going to know what just happened there. It should come back on. There we go. So what this document is, as you know, if you've used it, is it's a one-page vis visual representation of how your idea, your business, your concept, your um, program uh, should actually function if it were operating in the real world. Uh, so what we're going to do today is just briefly talk about how I see the business model canvas working. Um, and then have you folks work on a canvas of your own for a very specific uh, initiative program uh, centered around uh, veterans within your uh, communities and or community colleges. The way I always look at the canvas is uh, the, the uh, right side of the canvas, you know, really from the value proposition over here, 
I kind of look at it like, uh, like this is a stage, this is the front of a stage, and the audience is sitting over here watching this, this movie, this play, whatever the case might be, and uh, that's the public, you know, that's, that's what everybody out in the world sees about your business, is are these elements of the business model, like what value are you delivering to consumers, you know, how are you reaching consumers, who are your consumers, um, how do you acquire consumers? Uh, all of those things are what are visually um, and readily available to people out in the public domain. What people out here don't see is the stuff that resides on the left side of the business model canvas. Uh, doesn't mean that these things are less important. In fact, in many ways, these things are more important. Um, but they don't see them. They don't see the resources that you have or need in order to be able to deliver your value to consumers. They just see the value that you're delivering to them. Uh, they don't see the different types of partnerships that you need to be able to do that and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm going to just talk you through the canvas for our Veterans Entrepreneurship Training Symposium uh, to give you an idea of how uh, we kind of put it together. You okay? Oh, uh, I thought that was a I thought that was a signal. I need to stop. I don't know what the heck's going on. Did you want to put your thing on his Oh, I didn't know I didn't have that there. Oh gosh, yes, of course. These are very important words coming out. Of they are important words. <laughs> okay, so the bottom of the business model canvas, where you see revenue streams and you see cost structure. With any business or program or anything you do, these are actually the most two. These are the two most important elements of the business model canvas. That's why they're at the bottom because if these things aren't working, the whole thing comes tumbling down. By the way, uh, this part of it, especially the financial side of things, the cost structure side of things. You know, most entrepreneurs think uh, that's not really that important. You know, accounting and finance, you know, I'm the idea person. Uh, I have a great idea because my mom told me it was a good idea, so it must be so. And uh, I'm gonna spend uh, 80 to 95% of my time building something that I have a feeling people want. Uh, and maybe 5% of my time working on uh, building up a company uh, that could support that idea and that really should be reversed you know you, you can't build any you should never build anything before you know it's out there so part of what you're gonna learn through the canvas is that what when you put things on it uh, these will initially be simply guesses that you have about you know who you think your customers are that you're gonna be, re be reaching um, you know, uh, how you intend to deliver value and what that value is that you're gonna be delivering to customers. And then your job is gonna be, before you actually have the event or launch the program, to validate these assumptions that you have. This is how the canvas, of course, works, is you, you come up with assumptions about your business idea or your, your idea in general, and then you validate or invalidate these assumptions that you've put onto the canvas. So by the end of working through the canvas, you've learned a lot, which is really the, the job of a startup is just to learn about whether or not you have something that's workable or not. So you're gonna talk to community partners and you're gonna find out if any of them are even interested in partnering with you on the program or event that you're going to work on in a few minutes. But you'll put key partners in here who you think will be uh, interested in doing that. But until you actually speak to them, until you actually talk with them, until you actually confirm that yes, they're on board, then it's just a guess. You know, it's a hypothesis, as the business model canvas puts it. Um, so for us, the value that uh, we came up with was empowering veterans who were interested in business and specifically self-employment within the field of business. That was the the vision and the value that we wanted to deliver to the attendees to our Veterans Entrepreneurship Training Symposium. Um, we came up with that because of conversations we had with student veterans at our college 
and listening to them tell us about all these other types of events that they had gone to about business, you know, business fairs, you know, franchise fairs, and how flat they felt when they left these events. You know, it was just like, ugh. You know, I just felt, I felt kind of dirty after going there. I was just kind of being sold these different things and people just hawking their wares and I didn't really learn all that much. So we wanted to really empower those who came uh, who were interested in business and self-employment to walk away saying, wow, you know, I learned quite a bit and made some really wonderful connections at this event. How are we going to actually deliver the value to our customers was through the event itself. I mean, for us, that was our distribution channel, was the event was going to be the mechanism that would allow us to actually deliver the value that we had proposed. The customer segments we came up with and validated were three um, active duty service members. Uh, we have a military base, uh, an air base in uh, Hillsborough County in Tampa, McDill Air Base. There's also a central command on that um, air base. Uh, there's a very, very large uh, uh, active duty and veteran uh, population within the uh, Tampa Bay uh, area. So there's lots of active duty service members. Um, we also identified retired veterans. You know, some veterans uh, leave before they qualify for retirement. So, you know, they're, they're non-retired veterans, so to speak. They haven't, they haven't been in the military long enough to qualify for their pensions, but yet they're veterans. Uh, so we identified all three, and then we said to ourselves, should we reach out to the spouses of these uh, uh, three customer segments as well? And the answer to that was overwhelmingly yes, based upon the research we did because many uh, spouses are uh, sometimes veterans themselves, but also key business partners with that person if they are going to be going into a business. So they should come together and learn about, you know, what are the risks, what are the opportunities, how do you go about doing it? Are we up for this as a couple to really uh, launch this thing that we're talking about? So that's kind of who we identified as our customer segments. And again, it's important for you to know while we have something in every one of these uh, nine um, building blocks, you may not. You may not have key resources initially, and I don't want to put pressure on you when you work on it on your own to have to like make sure you have something for everything. But when you go to do it, you should be able to populate your business model canvas in eight to 10 minutes max, okay? You gotta quickly just boom, 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 brainstorm with the folks at your table if you're missing something and get it on there so then we can walk around and talk with you and then you can maybe share your ideas that you have. It may not be our idea, a symposium, or maybe it is. It could be uh, you know, a meetup group. It could be a certain curriculum like Ice House, for example, that you're gonna integrate into your program. It could be internships. It could be a trip to the SBDC that you're gonna take veterans to to learn about all the stuff they're doing there. Whatever it is, I, it doesn't matter to me what it is. Um, you may not, you may struggle with some of these different building blocks is what I'm trying to say. And don't worry about that. That's just the way the process is. Um, how are we going to actually get people acquire our customers? You know, how are we going to sort of get them aware of it? So for us, it was through paid advertising, uh, word of mouth, you know, sort of like virally spreading it um, by now students who've come through our program and certain types of promotional um, activities that we've engaged in. Uh, for us, the revenue stream is totally uh, sponsorship driven. Uh, this is where we get the money to fund the initiative uh, that we're talking about here. For you, we don't charge for it, for example, it's free. Uh, you might say, we're gonna charge for it. You might say, you know, we're gonna charge a nominal fee because of what Greta said. There's more value attached to events where people are charged. We elected not to do that, but you might. You might say, yeah, we're gonna get sponsors and we're gonna charge a fee. That would be a second revenue stream for you. Um, or we're gonna get sponsors, revenue stream, and vendor tables at that event. We elected not to have the vendor tables for the reason I described. We didn't want vendors to be there uh, just sort of trying to sell their stuff. So we kind of crowded that out for us. You might want it, so it's up to you. Uh, the cost structure, there's uh, lots of costs that go into uh, the event that we're putting on. 
Uh, and for you, those, those costs might be different. Obviously, food and advertising, labor costs. Um, the facilities use is something that the college uh, sort of kicks in. It's sort of like an in-kind uh, uh, gift from the college to use its facilities at no cost for this event. So, but we put that up there because it's something that you know, certainly you may not have access to, so you should have to consider that. Um, for us, the key resources, again, are the sponsors and our volunteers, you know, people who uh, come in from the community, uh, take the valuable time out of their day uh, to speak on panels, uh, to share their knowledge about um, whatever their field of expertise is. Like, for example, this year, we're having a panel on franchising. Uh, the last year, the first year we did it, we didn't have one on franchising. So we learned because people, we got feedback, we did research afterward and people were like, oh gosh, this was great, but I would have liked to have had a chance to learn more about franchising. So Beth and I went on a mission to find a stakeholder in the community that uh, we thought would be able to uh, provide that level of content to attendees this year. And we actually found a company, it's, a, it's actually a franchise, it's called FranNet. Uh, there may be one in your marketplace as well. And what they do is uh, work off of sort of a real estate model where they have a, uh, people who are interested in um, franchising come in. They uh, provide a whole array of services from assessing their ability to be a franchise owner to what type of franchise is appropriate for them for free. They provide all those services for free, connect them with the proper franchise that interests them, help them with financing, and then the franchise company actually pays the fee to a FranNet. That's kind of their model. But we made it clear to her, and she totally got it, that we don't want her talking about the services that FranNet offers, but rather what's involved in the franchising process. So there's no real like self-promotion self there. And then key activities, there were a lot of them. Uh, Polk is uh, the four key management functions of you know, uh, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So there's a lot of stuff that falls within those four management functions. But you've got to have a team. Uh, Beth and I, you know, while we're good, we're not, we're not good, we're great. We're great. We're great. <laughs> I'd say awesome. Um, you, we can't do it alone. Uh, so we uh, formed a, a team of engaged uh, stakeholders who really wanted to work on this event. We formed subcommittees where people could really begin to specialize in logistics for the event for getting um, you know, food sponsors for the, for the event, to line up speakers, to do a program, for a whole bunch of different subcommittees. Uh, so that was it, the first year, that's not this year. Don't, 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 well, no, I'm just telling her. Was somebody else was asking, he's gonna uh, be a liar. So. <laughs> well, no, 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 so, so we'll, <laughs> we're doing some of it though this year. Yeah, I mean, we, we utilize the community partners now, rather than doing internal teams uh, of people to do these types of things. Now we pretty much outsourced it to an event planner who is doing many of the logistics and a campus president who is. Right, but we're still using resources on the campus right. and the college to work on some of that stuff. So we don't have the committee structure that we had last no. year. Okay. It's only because he asked me okay. He's like, well, one of them doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> But it's still important to do all of that stuff. I mean, nevertheless. Now, security, uh, the budget, all of that stuff fell within the domain of our event planner this year. But, you know, again, the reason we uh, got an event planner is because Beth and I were running around with our heads cut off last year trying to do all this stuff, and we couldn't really focus on the stuff that we needed to spend most time on. So. Is yeah. your event planner a member of the college community or someone from one of your community partners? Yeah, she's a, a member of the business advisory board. Um, uh, she helps us get speakers on the campus. Uh, she's very she's deep. founder of Working Women of Tampa Bay, so her network is very rich. Okay. So there, um, we can utilize her resources. So once again, it's a community partner yeah. or a key partner for us Yep, and then the last one is the key partners on the top left there. Uh, for us, it was the uh, VA office on our campus. Uh, they were a key partner of ours in terms of spreading the word. Uh, we got them included in terms of uh, setting up uh, computers at the event for attendees who are interested in enrolling and becoming an HCC student, tapping into their VA benefits. Uh, we had a whole bunch of services available to veterans who were maybe a bit disconnected 
from society. They've been drifting, suffering from the experiences they've had uh, through uh, multiple deployments. Uh, and one of our hopes was that if people, we could get people onto our campus, um, that you know, if entrepreneurship wasn't for them, that's okay, but if we could at least get them connected to the benefits that they've earned, that's awesome too, you know, and that's a great outcome as well. Uh, local government, as Beth mentioned, uh, Hillsborough County is a very, very strong supporter of what we're doing for many reasons. Obviously, from a political standpoint, there's um, a very large population of veterans in our area, but also because it's just simply the right thing to do. You know, the county uh, believes strongly in what it is we're trying to do. Um, one thing that's not on the partnership uh, section there, but I do want to just mention it, and it would probably fall under uh, volunteers, is, you know, like Greta over here, and really folks from all of the other surrounding academic institutions, and we have a lot of them in the Tampa Bay area. We have universities and private colleges and other colleges and us. Um, we've really made a concerted effort to reach out into those uh, colleges um, and, and say, hey, what are those areas where we can work on uh, together, you know, uh, because instead of us each trying to step on each other's toes and, you know, trying to replicate other stuff and have it, let's just work together to make one huge thing. So we've made really great success there in pulling in uh, folks from other academic institutions. And our plan is uh, in year three to have this event in two counties, not just Hillsborough County, but to have it a, a two-day event uh, in Hillsborough and Pinellas County, which is where Greta lives and teaches. And then uh, two years from now, to have it expand into three counties, the county where Sarasota is, um, Pinellas County, and Hillsborough County, to try to make it more of a regional impact. And, and this way, if you can aggregate all of the resources into a, a very targeted event and not make it about its HCC's event or it's the Beth and Andy event, but it's a, <laughs> but it's a but it's a regional event. I think um, I think that's really where we're headed, you know, because that's what we believe in. That's what we think will bring the greatest value to that population, um, and that's something that really animates us and excites us. So I'm going to stop there. Does anybody have any questions about what the purpose of the canvas is? Um, what you're supposed to do with it. And again, these are all gonna just be guesses that you're gonna have at this point for whatever your project idea is, unless you actually have an idea you've done. Yes? Uh, I just wanna let you know, to not confuse you, I shared my canvas with you too, so you should have two canvases. Yep, for, okay. on the um, table there's be, two. Yeah, there's not gonna be time for me to talk about it, but that's okay, I shared it with you. <laughs> you question here? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> Waverly's got yes, Waverly. Is, uh, I see that I, I see that is uh, somewhere with Creative Commons, the actual model. So if I wanted to go back and use this in my institution, where would I get this framework to be able to actually go through this process? Oh, okay, okay. This is a good question. So this is all free stuff. Um, the the website I'm actually using up on the top left. It says Lean Launch Lab. Uh, if you go to leanlaunchlab.com, this is an amazing. Uh, website it's free for just one it has certain limitations like a freemium model you know some of the features in it that you really would like like to be able to collaborate on stuff aren't free so you have to pay for those but if you just want to be able to do the canvas and other things which I'll show you in a second it's a powerful thing if you go to another resource is a businessmodelgeneration.com which is Alex Osterwalder's homepage uh, there's a free PDF of the business model canvas, which you actually have on your. It's Google Dockable. It's Google Dockable. So all the people on mine, I have like five names. They all took a look at it. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, it's Google Dockable. Yeah, the other thing that's cool about this. Oh, God, do you have a question? Which which one integrates with Google Docs? The, the business canvas. The business canvas, business model generation canvas. Yep. What's it called? Business model generation. Generation.com. Yep. But what's cool about this is it's not just a tool that lets you um, create a canvas. Like, just to show you, if I wanted to add a little sticky note, I could click on it uh, and just type in this um, one's easier to use. I like fine looking group. 
could also purchase the bulk too. The bulk is group the of bulk. folks at our session. And then it puts it, it puts it by default in here, but you can just drag it to the appropriate uh, section. So let's say this was a customer segment. I would just sort of, you know, slide it over there into the customer segments panel. Um, but up at the top, the other features in here, which are kind of powerful, is you'll see over here a tab for interviews. Uh, this is great. Uh, this was something one of my students typed in, spoke with a weird professor in the elevator on September 3rd, met <laughs> Professor Gold. Uh, he appeared to be 29 years of age. I made them put that in. Uh, white male, um, extremely fit. So this was uh, obviously truthful. But what this allows you to do is, as you go out to validate some of the assumptions about your business model, is to then come back to the, the Lean Launch Lab website enter in who you spoke to uh, because the more and more customer discovery as it's referred to that you engage in the harder it is to remember who said what and what exactly happened you can bring this on an iPad where you go so you can actually type in notes about these meetings and sort of pull it all into a central location uh, to allow you to really make uh, meaningful decisions as a general rule of thumb you know research that you do uh, findings from research that you get should never, in my opinion, uh, drive decision making, but rather just inform your decision making. You know, you should have a balance between actual facts and your own vision and stuff that you want to do. Because oftentimes the research you get, while valid, um, may be a bit misleading or off uh, for some reason. So it's important to in use it as an informative tool for whatever it is you're doing. So you've got. Uh, interviews, uh, tasks like a to-do list that you can put in there, uh, a journal, and then it also allows you to conduct experiments, but I'm not going to go into that today because I want you to work on your Canvas plans, but it's a great, great resource for you to work on. Yes? So you, have you subscribed to that? Do you use this for all of your projects? Yes, so in our program, our academic program, we all the students use it, but for stuff that Beth and I worked on, uh, in terms of building our entrepreneurship program, which is called the HCC Innovation Sandbox. That's sort of like our umbrella uh, center, so to speak. And then we have an academic program underneath it and so forth, is we've approached everything that we've done through the lens of a startup. So we used the canvas first to map out our vision for our program. We then did research to validate the different business model assumptions about our program development that we had. So yes. We use the canvas for everything that we do in terms of our business development and um, advancement. Is this similar to that growth wheel thing they're going to talk about here? It's similar in a certain way. It's different, the growth wheel. Um, th that has sort of a certain, certain uh, cycle to it that you cycle through before you move from stage to stage. This is business model assumptions. You can start out first validating this and then jumping over to this. But in my opinion, the most important value, or the mo most important business model assumption you need to test is the one, the one thing here that if you were to find out it were not true, your entire thing would tumble. You have to pick the most critical business model assumption that you think you've come up with and say, you know what, let's test that one first because if that turns out to be false, then the rest of this is pointless. We need to reevaluate what it is we're doing. So that's part of the process as well. Get all of your assumptions up there. Whereas the wheel, it's designed to take you through a process that's sort of more orderly in some way, in some ways. Um, so that's what this is. I think it's a powerful tool. Uh, we believe deeply in it. We don't teach the business plan approach toward um, startups uh, where we are because we're at very early stage uh, entrepreneurs. So our goal, as I said before when I was sitting over there, is to teach people uh, first and foremost, is what you're working on uh, something that people actually want? Um, and if the answer to that is no, then there's no need for a business plan. Um, business plans are important artifacts later on in the process when you go for a bank loan and so on and so forth. But we have uh, members of our business advisory board who have multi-million dollar companies in terms of revenue that have never done a business plan and have just scaled off of the canvas approach toward 
uh, their businesses. So it can, it, it can work, it does work, it's a powerful tool for just helping you to work as a team on one page. You can see everything instead of having to flip through a plan and you know, there's a lot of planning and not a lot of doing in my experience. So this is really something that forces you to do and to take action on your ideas and not just talk about them. So uh, any other questions? Before? Yes. Um, I utilize this with my clients. And Great. I also have them look at our business guidelines so they kind of have an idea like why it's important to have this document. But I also use canvanizer.com yep. so that way they can put it together and I can go in and make edits to it mm -hmm. so we can both have an interactive session. Canvanizer is another great resource. It's free. They have lots of, we used it last term. The, the reason we, we went away from that was this has a richer set of tools uh, that you can sort of uh, pull into one For central hub. We, we like experimentation. Yeah, we make, students, we make students meet with 150 people a semester. They have to or else they can't pass and complete the certificate. So they're out in the field a lot meeting with and talking to people about customer discovery. They needed something like this to be able to pull that information in, but Canvanizer is great as well. Yeah, because I use that for the startup. Yeah. People who are in business and really have never put a plan together, yeah. this is what I use. So it's, it works really well. Before you go into your thing, um, Jason came up to me during the break and just wanted to share something with you about something we were talking about, which I think is very important. Uh, it's not related to the canvas, uh, but I wanted to give him a second to just do that. Sure. Make sure that's on. Okay. I think that on the bottom, I think there's like a little switch somewhere. All right, we're good. Great, okay, thanks, Andy. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, earlier we were discussing strategies for leveraging um, existing campus veteran services. Uh, basically to get your program up and running. And uh, Andy, uh, a few people talked about the importance of recruiting and marketing. And in my introduction, I mentioned we did something with the SBDCs in California, and we could see very clearly uh, where people's recruiting, excuse me, <clears throat> recruiting and marketing efforts didn't work out very well by attendance in the workshops. And um, just briefly, uh, one of our, the workshop facilitators was also a veteran, and uh, he w had a, I'm sorry, a technology startup as well. So he's familiar with the world of entrepreneurship and knew a little something about marketing. And his attendance rates were like much further ahead than most of the other workshops. Mm -hmm. So this is just to reinforce the point that the marketing and outreach is really important. So identifying people on your team that can do that effectively is uh, pretty critical. And, and get what, what it is you're trying to do, right? Exactly. Yeah, yes. that's, yes. that's uh, definitely true. All right, any other questions about the camp? Thank you for sharing that, Jason. Where in California? So, well, I was based in the San Francisco Bay Area at the time, but most of our programs were in SoCal. We did one uh, down at Riverside. Ron Pardee ran uh, one of these workshops down there. And then East Los Angeles Community College, um, Pasadena City College, Palomar, Miramar, or excuse me, Miracosta. Yeah. So. Um, any other questions about anything before you dive in? All right, great. So what time is it, Beth? All right, so why don't you take 10, max 15 minutes, we'll walk around, hear what your ideas are, brainstorm, and then um, we'd like to hear from you, for anybody who'd like to share what your idea is, we'd love to hear that at the end, okay? Sorry, I didn't... So, all right, so what did you come up with? Great, okay, so I, I've gotta be honest, um, we, I don't think we got too far at our table, but if we're just using this basic model as you know, the basic assumptions for a canvas, I mean, everybody is in here trying to do veterans programs and for uh, veteran entrepreneurs, right? So, um, I'd like to address like the revenue stream portion of it. And we're talking about sponsors, and in my experience dealing with some of our initiatives with community college partners, I get to see a little bit about you know where the funding comes from and all the issues that people have to deal with. So uh, oftentimes it's philanthropic, philanthropic sponsors, like I've seen the Kaufman Foundation, you know, sponsor community colleges and so forth. At other times it's a you know a, a per user. I'm sorry, the, the end user is paying some sort of fee for whatever program. Uh, but one thing that I haven't seen anybody discuss. Um, 
specific philanthropic partners that might be very, very supportive of the veteran space. I'm just gonna use uh, Pikes Peak Community College as sort of a case study out in Colorado Springs. And so they were seeking funding to uh, help with their initiative. Uh, and they're, they're using Ice House, I'm not trying to plug our program, but they're doing a big project there. <laughs> And so, you know, they were seeking funding from Kaufman and so forth, but uh, it occurred to me, you know, there are other big sponsors, for example, the CSR foundations associated with like Northrop Grumman and uh, Lockheed Martin, other mm -hmm. big defense contractors, you know, they're in that space in the Colorado Springs and Colorado area. The, all those foundations, they have education programs too, and they're not part of the conversation. So I just want to like, you know, add into this business model canvas some more granularity or refinement to who the philanthropic sorry, the philanthropic sponsors might be, because there's more alignment with the value proposition. They care about what happens to veterans. Mm -hmm. Veterans are part of their workforce. So yeah, just offering granularity in that space. That's Excellent, all. that's tremendous. Okay. And of course, there's always uh, veteran-owned businesses locally as well, which is obviously a natural connection to go after them as well. But that's a great, uh, these larger companies that have huge CSR initiatives um, that care deeply about mm -hmm. the mission and purpose of these events, that's awesome. So thank you for sharing that. Sure, absolutely. Anybody has a different value proposition? Does anybody have something that's not an event? Oh yeah. Do you guys, do you guys want to share your value proposition? Sure. I'm just, I'm like, something different. She's got pink stickies and everything. I know. Wow. <laughs> oh, great. Where am I going? Right over here. Right here. Right here. Stand next to me. Right here. Right here. Good. Right here. Good. Enough. Yep. Uh, well, my value proposition, thank you, was uh, designing an um, entrepreneurial certificate program uh, specifically for veterans, active military, and their spouses. So uh, I did identify, try to identify those customer segments or target groups. So we really do, would like to um, develop a uh, four, five, six um, course certificate that uh, these folks can take and then uh, perhaps offer a competition at the end uh, because we do have a bank that's very interested in offering money, sponsoring a competition. So I, I would like, uh, got, I did get a little feedback about uh, who you get on board to help develop the uh, courses. Um, we do have a uh, college um, certificate course that's no longer being offered. There was a little bit lack of interest uh, in it. enrollment dropped off. So we could bring in the liberal arts division again and they have a very good newly developed advisory committee um, to work on designing specifically for veterans. That's excellent. Thank you. I like that. And then the question is, do we need to get, you know, people, particu particular people or folks in um, uh, when developing courses to, to work on these specific classes? So a suggestion I would have uh, under a key activity, and this is something that Andy and I did when we were developing our certificate, was um, doing research. So before we design the certificate, because we were in the same boat, we had a certificate already working, uh, excuse me, already in existence, but that had no enrollment. Right. Okay. So we went out to. We have a, a, a huge customer base, if you will, forty-five thousand students. We key activity on our canvas was survey current students to see what they want in terms of uh, entrepreneurship education. Do they want a 12 credit? Do they want a 6 credit? Do they want a 24 credit? Do they want an AS degree? Do they even uh, want? Do they even do they want, want it in the first place? Yeah. And then what courses? So we have that information. So key activity could be to do a survey about that particular um, value prop, which is uh, a new certificate program for your institution. And a key partner could easily be Hillsborough Community College to see what our survey was. We could share it with you in order to be able to. And a key partner for you also could be the institutional research department at your institution, right. which we yes. became very friendly with, and they, they'll do all, you know, you develop the questions, but they'll launch the survey and aggregate all the data and calculate it for you, and, you know, but we're happy to share our survey with you as well. Wonderful. Um, to help you kind of kickstart, you know, this, because it, it should be an evidence-based approach toward yes. any kind of program yes. development. Right. You know? yep. Another suggestion was u utilizing the Quality Matters Review um, team and, and getting them in there to take a look at our current curriculum and see why uh, we may have had some problems with it. That's good too. 
like that. I'm not familiar with it, but um, I, I have a, a contact over here that if anybody else is interested. <laughs> so thank you very Wait, much now, for those on. suggestions. I need you to turn that around so I can take a nice picture of you with your canvas with the little thing there. Yeah. We have to hashtag your college. That's too. awesome. That's right. Very good. Oh, wait, I don't have the flash on the wall. Sorry. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was excellent. Let's get to the program. Anybody else like to go? I just have a question for her. What is your time frame for you get to a acquiring a sponsorship from the bank that you Well, we, we have a current sponsorship um, for a student. Um, competition, a high school and, and college level student competition. And so we separated out the veteran competition and we so we have another bank that's very interested in getting into that competition space. And um, since two banks don't want to do do uh, work on one competition, we brought the bank into the veterans and they're very happy to do it. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other events or um, uh, value propositions other than the event or a academic program of any sort? Yes. Come on down. Okay. Now, uh, be kind to me because you know this is my <laughs> this is my boss here. So, uh, I'm uh, Nancy Sanders, and I'm the uh, regional center director for Maricopa Community College's Small Business Development Center. And one of the things that Janice and I have talked about a little bit is, and I mentioned this earlier, that CEI, the business incubator, has a student incubator that we, the SBDC, really manages and oversees. And frankly, it's not um, meeting the expectations of the program. And so we've been in discussion with um, the organization, with CEI, to try to expand that space. It's, it's quite large, what, 1,500 square feet? something like that. It's a half of my office that is really underutilized. So we just were in discussion with how to expand that incubator space. And so I'm not really sure what it looks like, but the value proposition is something along the lines of positioning uh, Maricopa Small Business Development Center as the go-to business resource for students as well as the small business community. So we have a lot of stakeholders, obviously, um, the colleges, of which there are many in Maricopa, and then, of course, the business, the existing business community chambers. And so we're just, what I guess the vision really is one place that our clients can come to to share best practices, to have that one-on-one -on -one counseling with our business analysts, as well as building the value for Fahrenheit Labs, which is CEI student incubator. So I'm just kind of, you know, brain, you know, just kind of thinking about it, and you know, we, we don't know where it's going, but well, I'm, I, I'm interested know, in input. I don't know who you work for, but that was a brilliant hire. Whoever hired you. Or <laughs> Thanks for making me look good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why, because what I heard from you more than anything was um, the presence of inefficiencies within, inefficiencies within uh, any kind of ecosystem or institution, and you're speaking about creating efficiencies, you know, pulling things together so they can, it can work in a more centralized, efficient manner, you know, to accomplish what it is you're looking to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, I would say you should ask for a raise. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have anything they'd like to share before we finish up? Come on, Come on, W. No, 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 it's not really a new <laughs> The one thing that we've done that I'm, uh, that I think other people might already do or consider doing, is through our uh, Center for Small Business Education, Growth, and Training, we do an event during uh, Small Business Week. And that might be a key time. I didn't look at the date of when you schedule uh, yours, but that would be a key week when people are kind of focused on starting small businesses. Right. So yeah. in terms of timing. For veterans, we did a Veterans Day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we did this event for Veterans Day week, but as it turns out, the week of Saturday of our event, November 15th, is the kickoff of Global Entrepreneurship Week, 
which is something that a lot of communities embrace and have a whole series of different events. So the timing of it was really beneficial to us. I'm glad you brought that up because we, we look to see November 15th. Um, to do a veterans event on Veterans Day. They're exactly. And then all your people right. are doing other things that cannot be your speakers. Right. So we did yeah. the weekend after. All right, if there's nobody else that would like to speak, um, I'll let Beth wind things and just thank everybody for coming. Yeah, you know, I can. Yeah. That's all we have. Thank you so much, John.